Okay, welcome back everyone. It looks like uh, the commissioners are all here. So I move that we reconvene this January 21st, 2022 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes as well. So we are back and we are moving um, straight into calendar number 17-22-B. <clears throat> which is back with Councillor Fred Augustine. So Fred, let us know when you're here. And meantime, I'll, I'll say just what, um, what I keep saying, that if anyone is on to object for this matter 17-22-Z, please just raise your hand and we'll make sure that you get a chance to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Howard, are you, Howard Kaplan, are you on? I am. Okay. Hello. Um, Bob Zuber, are you on? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, again, Mr. Chairman, uh, Fred Augustine, on behalf of the applicants, Harv Kaplan and Sarah Grady, uh, the applicants are the owners of the property located at 2134 North Clifton. The property is currently improved with a two and a half story single family residence. The applicants and their family currently reside at the home and obviously would like to remain there. Um, they are expecting another child this spring. So the family will need additional room. Um, currently the existing home does have a rear two-story open porch. Um, the applicants plan to essentially demolish that and in its place, construct a one-story addition with a rooftop deck. Um, this addition will be aligned with the Northern wall of the existing home. Currently, the existing home does not comply with the required side setbacks. Um, the property, the home is built up to its north side property line. So as a result, the one story addition will also be built up to its north side property line, thus not comply with the required side setbacks, um, which is the reason we are here before the board. Uh, we are seeking to reduce the combined side setback requirement down to 3.38 feet uh, reduce the north side setback down to 0 0.7 feet with a south side setback remaining at 2.68 feet. Um, here with me this afternoon is Howard Kaplan, as well as the project architect, Bob Zuber. Um, Mr. Kaplan, please state your name and address for the record. Howard uh, M. Kaplan, uh, 2134 North Clifton um, in Chicago, 60614. Along Thank with your you. wife, Sarah. Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna, I'll swear them in right when they say their address. Um, Mr. Kaplan, will you, uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Uh, I do. Thank you. Along with your wife, Sarah, you co-own the property at 2134 North Clifton, is that right? Yes. And it's currently improved with a two, two and a half story single family residence? Yes. And you and your family currently reside there, is that right? Correct, my wife and I and our two kids. Okay, and with the newborn coming this spring, you're gonna need additional rooms, is that right? Correct. So currently um, your home has an open two-story porch at the rear of the home, is that right? Correct. And the plan is to essentially demolish that porch and construct a one-story addition with the rooftop deck, is that right? Co correct, we're gonna keep the same footprint and enclose the bottom porch. That's correct. Um, and this addition will be aligned with the north wall of your existing home, is that right? Correct, yes. And currently your home does not comply with the site setback requirements, is that right? That's my understanding, yes. All right, so since the addition will match the existing home's north wall, it is your understanding also that the addition will not comply with the site setback requirements, is that right? Correct, that's my understanding. Okay, uh, which is the reason why we're here seeking a variation to reduce the site setbacks, is that correct? Yes. On your behalf, my office did submit an affidavit that you executed, is that right? That's right. And if we continued, your testimony here today would be consistent with the facts presented in your affidavit, is that right? Yes, correct. Thank you. Um, I'd like to go to my second witness, um, Bob Zuber. Mr. Zuber, are you on? Yes, I am. All right. Uh, Mr. Zuber, please state your name and address for the record. Robert Zuber, uh, Morganti Wilson Architects, 2834 Central Street, Evanston, Illinois, 60201. Thanks, Mr. Zuber. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. 
Thank you. And uh, you're a licensed architect in the state of Illinois. Is that right, Mr. Zuber? That's correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to have Mr. Zuber be recognized as an expert witness in architecture, if I can. Okay, to the extent it's applicable for an architect okay. to be recognized, but we know he's an architect. Okay. Um, so Mr. Zuber, property is improved with an existing home that's around, you say around 105 years old, is that right? That's correct. And in your professional opinion, working with such a structure can also be challenging and pose a hardship, is that right? Yes. Um, as I stated previously, there is an existing rear two-story open porch at the, um, behind the home, is that right? That's correct. And the plan is essentially to demolish that porch and replace it with a one-story addition with a rooftop deck, is that right? Yes. And as I stated previously, the existing home is already built up to its north side property line, is that right? Yes. And the, our proposed addition will be aligned with the north wall of the existing home, essentially maintaining that same setback at the north, right? Yes. Um, which is the reason why we are, we are here today seeking a variation to reduce the side setbacks, is that right? Yes. On your behalf, my office did submit an affidavit that you executed, is that right? That's correct. And if we did continue, your testimony here today would be consistent with the facts presented in your affidavit, is that right? Yes. Um, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions for our witnesses. We're here to answer any questions the board may have. Thanks. So just a clarification, because you may, uh, you very well said this, but um, does the addition go further in depth um, than the previous porch did? Bob, did you want to answer that? Yes. Uh, towards, you're talking about towards the inside of the property, correct? Yeah, so towards what would be the in sorry, because I can't figure out north, south, east, west. Yeah, the north right. side. It's, it's the in about the, the back of the house. Are we extending the back of the house deeper into the lot? Yeah, it's a, it's roughly about four inches in from the existing existing wall. So it's um it's um essentially the interior would line up. Okay, got it. Okay, other questions from the board. <laughs> Okay, Fred, and I believe you got everyone on, right? Because uh, Bob and um, John are partners? Yeah, they are. Okay. okay, so it sounds like we've got everything we need to make a determination. So um, thank you everyone for your time and we'll circle back. Thank, thank you. you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna go to calendar numbers 18-22-Z and 19-22-Z. Um, at 3137 North Balding. So um, uh, when Barry Ash is settled here, uh, let us know. In meantime, if anyone's here to object on these matters, um, please just raise your hand and we'll make sure you get the opportunity to speak. Okay, I'm trying to uh, get my, uh, oh here, I'm trying to get my picture here, start my video, okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. For the record, my name is Barry Ash. I'm the attorney representing the applicant in this matter. And the applicant, uh, I've just seen if Miles O'Kelly is here, I see him. And uh, I also have a witness, the architect, Pat Magner, who is also available. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, introduce uh, Miles O'Kelly. Uh, to the board and Miles, if you could just state your name and address for the record. My name is Miles O'Kelly. My address is 3137 North Spalding, Chicago, Illinois, 60618. Thank you. And Miles, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Uh, Miles, is this uh, your personal residence? Yes, it is. And uh, what brings us here today is uh, the request that's set forth in the agenda of the two variation requests. And if you could briefly describe to the board what you were seeking to, or let me back up. You, you bought this house as is when you, uh, when you purchased the property. You didn't do any construction to the that's property, right? And that's the property has a single family residence. It has a back porch and it has a garage. 
And if you could briefly describe what you were trying to achieve as far as any rehab or renovation to the rear of the property. So I'm just trying to repair the back porch, which wasn't previously permitted and just repair it um, kind of to its current state, but um, to bring it up to city code by having it permitted. And what happened is when you were looking to do the rehab, you engaged a contractor to obtain the necessary permits to do same, to do same. and what happened? Uh, they informed me that the uh, porch as currently constructed was never permitted with the city as it is currently constructed. So in order to get it, the proper permit, you needed to engage an architect in order for you to obtain the necessary uh, permit from the contractor, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and with that, I have uh, Pat Magner to point, just briefly testify of the uniqueness and hardship that the applicant is finding in doing this renovation rehab. If you could state your name for the record. Pat. Pat, you might be on mute. I got you. Okay, sorry. Yep. Um, so my name is Pat Magner. I reside at... Uh, 919 Thatcher Avenue in River Forest, Illinois, 60305. And Pat, you are a licensed architect? Yes, I am. And can you just briefly describe to the board uh, the uniqueness of uh, the situation here, which and, is- and Sorry, Councillor, I, I believe I forgot to swear in. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. My fault. Um, Pat, so do you swear firm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Uh, so just moving forward, can you just briefly describe the uniqueness of this property, which caused the applicant to have to seek the variations that are needed? Uh, yeah, the code requirements for this zoning district require a 225 square foot rear yard open space. But the rear yard open space can only be on a deck if it's located four feet or less above grade. This house was constructed with the first floor at five feet, 10 inches above grade. So in order to construct a deck that is off the back of the house, the elevation of the deck is either too high to be considered open space, or there are stairs and a landing down to a deck level, which eat into the required 225 square feet of deck that can be an open yard. So the, it's kind of a unique situation in that the building itself creates this dilemma where you can't get the rear yard open space in the backyard without encroaching in that required yard. Okay. Uh, and then you did provide an affidavit uh, to me uh, setting forth your findings of fact, which I then submitted to the board. And you can confirm that if you were to further testify, it would be consistent with what was submitted to the board. That's correct, yes. Okay, I have both of these uh, chairman, both in the board, both of these individuals are open for any questions you may have. Okay, I might have a few, but I, um, I wanna open up to the board first. So any questions from the board on this? Okay, so my question is more of a, com or a confirmation. Uh, because this is the porch, or the deck, we'll call deck. it, now leads to a stairway that leads to the roof. Um, this gets rid of basically all permeable ground, right? That's actually the condition that's there now. The entire backyard is covered by a deck and stairs to the basement. So there's okay. really no change there. Okay, I see. Um, and it, to the architect, is there is there... I mean, is there any other alternative to achieving this in your mind? Well, no matter what we do, we're, we're going to, if, as I say, if you come out of the back door of the house, which is elevated, we'll call it six feet, it's five feet, 10 inches, but call it six feet for simplicity. You're required by, by code, building code to have a landing at the, the door to stairs. So by the time you construct the area of the landing plus the stairs, you have encroached into the 15 feet by 15 feet dimensions that zoning requires for a rear yard open space because the rear yard open space is supposed to be kept clear. So you can't walk out the back door of the house 
with, and have stairs and landing unless this deck is elevated up to the height of the back door. Well, that then becomes higher than is permitted for a deck to be considered rear yard open space. So I'm not sure, it's, it's like the chicken and the egg. The house is too tall, so you can't get the rear yard in the backyard without relocating it to the roof deck, to the garage roof deck. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, any other questions from the board? Okay, I think we've got a good view of what's going on here. So we will take this one under consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks everyone. All right, let's go to calendar number 20-22-Z. Um, if anyone is here on the call to object to 20-22-Z, please just raise your hand and we'll make sure you have the opportunity to speak. Um, with that, we've got Councillor Tyler Manick here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Tyler Manick or Shane Banks, Kenyon Schwartz. I'm the attorney for the applicant, Eagle OZB1 LLC. Uh, for the applicant, we also have Scott Albright and their project architect, Gary Wands. The applicant here seeks a variation to reduce the required automobile parking spaces from three to two in order to erect a three-story, three-dwelling unit residential building with a detached garage. The property is currently a vacant lot. The CTA Green Line elevated train tracks run along the rear property line of this lot. There is a structural pier for the train tracks along the lot's rear property line. When the applicant submitted for permits to uh, permit a three space garage, uh, those permit, that permit application was denied because the train track uh, structural pier uh, prevented adequate clearance to one of the parking spaces. As a result, the plan examiner recommended that we seek this variation to reduce the parking space requirement by one call out that third parking space and use it for storage instead of parking. Uh, this, the, lot, the lot's block consists predominantly of similar multifamily uses so that this development maintains the character of the area. In addition, the lot is a block away from the Indiana Green Line CTA station, a few blocks away from the 43rd Street Green Line CTA station, and within uh, a block of numerous other CTA bus routes, uh, making uh, parking for this location unnecessary. There is also plenty of street parking available. Thus, the variation is necessary in order to develop the property, overcome the hardship from the CTA structural piers that is a unique condition to this location and obtain a reasonable return. Uh, prior to filing this application, uh, the, the applicant did meet with Alder Woman Dowell, who sent an email uh, no issues with this project, which was delivered to the zoning board and the applicant has met with the adjacent neighbors who don't have an issue with this. So should this requested variations be granted, the vacant lot will be able to be developed and provide the community with increased housing options. With that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd call my first witness, uh, Mr. Scott Albright. Great. Uh, here. Great, hi Scott. So can you please state your name and address? Scott Albright. 514 East 95th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60619. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Albright, uh, you are a principal with the applicant Eagle OZ1 LLC? I am. And you are also a licensed general contractor, correct? Yes. And did you sign an affidavit in connection uh, with this application and submit all the findings of fact? Yes. And are the statements you made in that affidavit true and correct? They are. And do you adopt as your testimony here today, the testimony you provided in the affidavit? I do. Mr. Chairman, unless there's questions for Mr. Albright, I'll move to Mr. Wands. Any questions from the board right now for Mr. Albright? Okay, you can keep going. Thank you. Mr. Wands, are you on the meeting? 
Yes, I'm here. Would you like to swear him in, Mr. Chairman? Yep, that would be great. Um, so Mr. Wands, will you state your name and address, please? Hi, my name is Gary Wands. I reside at uh, 1130 North Dearborn. Uh, that's unit 2401 Chicago, 60610. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do, yes. And Mr. Wands, uh, you're an architect licensed with the state of Illinois, correct? I am, yes. And you're the arch architect of record for this project? Yes. And you prepared the plans uh, that were submitted with this application? Uh, yes, I did. And during the review of the permit application in consulting uh, the plan examiner for the permit application, it was determined that the structural pier for the CTA train track prevented adequate clearance for the third parking space that was originally proposed, correct? Yes, that is correct. And, and you were directed to make that third parking space that had inadequate, inadequate clearance to be storage and submit for a two-car garage, correct? Yes. And did you sign an affidavit that was uh, submitted with the findings of fact for this application? I did, yes. And is the testimony provided in that affidavit true and correct? Yes. And do you adopt as your testimony here today, the testimony you provided in your affidavit? Yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have no further questions for Mr. Wants. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Great, thank you, Councillor. Um, any questions from the board for either Mr. Albright or Mr. Wands? Okay, we're good here. So thank you very much everyone for your time and we'll take this under consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All right, we're gonna move to calendar number 21-22-S. Uh, um, with Councilor Amy Kirsten, I'm gonna read the department's recommendation meantime Again, if there's anyone want to act or speak for 21-22-S, um, just raise your hand, we'll get you promoted. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish a drive-through facility to serve a proposed tropical smoothie cafe, uh, restaurant slash cafe, provided that the special use is issued solely to the applicant, EVT IL 22 LLC, and the development is consistent with the design and layout plans and drawings dated January 9th, 2022, prepared by Jack P. Morgan Architect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amy Kirsten here from the law firm Reyes Kirsten. I'm uh, pleased to be here on behalf of the entity that intends to operate the Tropical Smoothie Cafe. The subject property is located in the B3-2 district, and it was formerly used as a Taco Bell, or sorry, as a Pizza Hut that had a drive-through. Um, the Pizza Hut closed approximately two years ago, and now a Tropical Smoothie has a proposal to reuse the building for smoothies. So I have three witnesses to present today. Um, my understanding is that we have a letter of no opposition from the alderman and that the Department of Planning and Development uh, has indicated that the plans are, are sufficient for their purposes. Um, Mr. Chairman, would you like me to call my witnesses or are we waiting for a DPD? Oh, you can go ahead and call the witnesses. I'll get everyone sworn in. Thank you so much. Uh, first, I, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, would you like to do them all at once? I have three witnesses or we can do them individually. Yep, let's do it all at once. Very good. Uh, Cesar Coronado, John Bennett, and Hugh Edfers. Gentlemen, are you all online? And Mr. Coronado, if you're on, please just state your name and address. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we got a text that he's he is on. I do see that our appraiser, Mr. Edfers, is on the line. I could start with uh, Mr. Edfers while we wait for everybody else to resolve their technical uh, challenges. I think Caesar is just muted. Um, and I, Caesar is the applicant, correct? That's correct. There we go. Caesar, are you unmuted now? 
Yes, yes. Apologies. Okay. I uh, realized I was muted. Uh, name, Cesar Coronado, address, 1120 Hull Terrace, Evanston, Illinois, 60202. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so, Thanks. Um, Thanks for Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I was just going to go down the line and swear them all in. Very good. Uh, so, John Bennett, are you on? Okay, let's try Hugh Edfors. Are you on? Yes. Great. Hugh, can you state your name and address? Hugh Edfors, 1150 North Lakeshore Drive, Unit 18K, Chicago, Illinois. Great. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and state proceedings? Yes, I do. And remind me, what is your role, Mr. Edfors? Uh, I'm an appraiser. That's I'm right. an AI appraiser. Yep, I've got your report as well, and we've reviewed your report and acknowledged your expertise. Um, so now if we go to John Bennett, I see John's unmuted. John, can you state your name and address? Yes, John Bennett with JT Designers at 211 South Ritter Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. All right. There we go. Thanks, Counselor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I'll start with uh, Cesar Coronado. Um, Mr. Coronado, did you select this location because it already had a drive through window at the existing building? Correct. And, uh, sir, do you have experience operating other tropical smoothie cafes? Yes. And where are those other tropical smoothie cafes? In Chicago. And how many do you operate? Currently two. And sir, will the, in your opinion, will the drive through help patrons who wish to avoid entering the store due to COVID or other health concerns preserve their own health by using the drive through window? Correct. And, and will tropical smoothies support public health by offering fresh food to the public? Yes. And can you describe a couple of menu items that are that are fresh foods or uncooked or vegetarian or low fat or low carbohydrate foods that may be appealing to people who have dietary restrictions? I would love to. So we primarily offer fresh fruit smoothies. Um, we also have a menu consisting of wraps, bowls, quesadillas, flatbreads and sandwiches, which are all prepared fresh to order. Very good. And sir, um, initially, what will be the hours of operation for the drive through 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Very good. Thank you so much. Unless there are uh, other questions for Mr. Coronado, I'll move to Mr. Bennett. All right. So Thank you can go with Mr. Bennett and we'll, we'll circle back with questions. Great, thank you very much. And Mr. Chairman, we also provided um, some exhibits that, that show uh, renderings of what the building would look like from the exterior once improved. Um, uh, Mr. Bennett, can you uh, please explain your role in the uh, development of this project? Yes, we are an approved design uh, firm, a design consulting firm by Tropical Smoothie Cafe Corporate. I work with Mr. Jack Morgan, the architect for the project, and we, I was the project manager that coordinated with Mr. Coronado for his desires to remodel, as well as the corporate imaging program for this project. Okay. And Mr. Bennett, other than the special use permit for the drive-through, are you aware of any other ways in which this, uh, this property might need other relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals or any other body in the city of Chicago or... Another way of phrasing this is to your knowledge, uh, but for requiring a special use permit, is this project ready to go? This project is ready to go. It has gone through plan review and the only issue outstanding at the moment is this special use approval. And sir, um, has this site been designed to protect, protect pedestrian safety? Yes. And has the site been designed to add a stop sign for people who are going through the drive-through before they advance? Yes. And um, this was a redevelopment of an existing pizza hut. Uh, were you or, or members of the development team who have spoken to you aware of any operational problems with the drive-through at the time it was used as a pizza hut? No. 
And will you be uh, putting uh, in a speaker board that um, could create a noise problem for neighbors? Could neighbors be affected by noise? No, the speaker sound would be well within tolerance. Very good. And uh, sir, your affidavit indicates that the proposed speaker would be no more than 60 decibels. Uh, do you have any changes to your affidavit or is the rest of your testimony consistent with that affidavit? I have no other changes. Very good. Um, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to call Hugh Edfers, our appraiser. Uh, we've already acknowledged Mr. Uh, Edfers um, curriculum vitae and that his report has been submitted to the board. Uh, Mr. Edfers, did you develop, uh, did you visit this site? Yes, I visited the site. I looked, I made an exterior inspection. I also uh, examined the neighborhood around and the property. And is the surrounding neighborhood uh, mostly commercial properties? Along the major streets, yes. Very good. And is re our residential uses located anywhere within a few hundred feet of this location? Uh, they're not very close at all. No, I don't. I didn't see any. And in your opinion, is a redevelopment of this existing drive-through appropriate for this location? Well, I think it absolutely is because of the relatively high traffic count and the fact that the drive-through provides safety for uh, patrons of the facility in that there is a, uh, it, it's a direct drive-through as opposed to uh, a large parking lot where customers would walk across. So it's a very convenient and also because of the pandemic potential patrons do not have to go into a building and, and yes and could you see this drive through having any harm to surrounding properties if the drive through were to be reopened for a tropical smoothie not at all because many of the adjacent and nearby properties the retail properties have drive throughs very good. And um, uh, Mr. Edvers, you submitted an affidavit to the board. Is there anything if I, uh, about your testimony today that if I were going to ask you a different question would be inconsistent with your affidavit? Not at all. And I, I acknowledge that I forgot to ask Mr. Coronado that same question. Mr. Coronado, if you're still on the line, um, I'd just like to affirm that the affidavit that you submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals is still correct and that there are no questions that I would ask you today where your testimony would be inconsistent with that affidavit. Correct. Great, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're, we're available for questions if you have any. Great, thank you, everyone. Um, any questions from the board? We've got all the info we need. Um, so good. thank you very much, everyone, for your time and we'll take this under consideration. We're grateful. Thank you so much, everyone. Good. Enjoy your weekend. You too. All right. Um, let's move to calendar numbers 24-22-Z and 25-22-Z. If anyone is on to object for these matters, um, please just raise your hand and we'll get you promoted to speak. I believe that we have Mark Kubiak as counselor. So Mark, let us know when you're here. Mr. Chairman, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Good. Um, I don't know if the video is working, but uh, my name is Mark Kupiak. I'm an attorney with Offices 77 West Washington. I represent the applicant, and I have uh, two witnesses today. Okay. One is the applicant, Mary Pua, and the other witness is John Hanna of Hanna Architects, the project architect. And this, this, uh, these two cases are for the property at 215 South Ruble. And we've got uh, actually two variations that we're requesting. It's one project. I think it makes sense if we do these both at the same time and let all the evidence apply to each case, both cases. Um, but anyway, yeah, just, no, no, I agree. I'm just looking to make sure your applicant is. Uh, is oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Mary, she's probably under Mary, 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 or. I know I, know I saw her name. I'm going to get her promoted. I see. Uh, or last name Pua. P -U -A. Yeah, so why Pua so has to accept promotion? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Oh. There we go. There we go. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, hi, Ms. Pua. Okay, Counselor, go ahead. I'll get her sworn in whenever you're ready. You so we've got two cases, and the first case 
there's a very vari variation to reduce the front setback. Um, the um, unique circumstance with respect to the front setback is that uh, in addition to the fact that we have a short substandard lot, only 100 feet deep, uh, the existing buildings on the block, and they have short lots also, the existing buildings are set back four feet from the front property line. When the city computes the required front setback, they allow you to take the average depth of the two buildings on either side. Our unique circumstances, we have a vacant lot adjacent to the north. And if you've got the adjacent lot in the zoning district, they apply a 12 foot setback to the vacant lot. So when you plug in 12 feet to that computation, the city would require a seven foot front setback. Uh, no real reason to do that. We're asking for the four foot setback so we can line up with the existing buildings. So that's the first case. Second case is rear yard open space. Uh, again, the hardship uh, is short lot, 100 feet deep. The applicant plans a three unit building on the subject property. And with the rear yard open space, not only does the city require a certain minimum number of square feet, but they also require that the rear yard open space have a depth of 10 feet. So when you look at the front setback, the depth of the building, the rear porch, and we do provide the required parking at the rear, one-to-one -one parking, there's just not enough room to fit that required open space. Uh, the project architect actually has a design where he does uh, have some uh, alternate design features that address open space, and I'll let him describe that. Uh, I'd also like to mention, we. Um, uh, we did uh, talk to the local alderman to advise him that the case was up today, and he did ask me to mention that uh, there was a zoning change previously specifically for this project, and he did hold a virtual community meeting with mailed notice to property owners, and he attended that meeting, and after that meeting, the zoning change was done as a type one application, same plan as we have here today, and always anticipated some zoning board relief, so as a result, he supports these two applications. So with that, my first witness would be Mary. Mary, are you there? Yes, I am. Mary, would you please state your name and your address? Yes, Oi Lynn Pua, address 2836 South Wells, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. Mary, Thank you, correct? Mr. Biden. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Mary, is it true that your brother owns a subject property? Uh, yes, we are co-owners on the property, but currently the name is just, you know, under him, like the deed is just under him. But once uh, the project starts and the development starts, we're going to add my name back on. Right. So you have an agreement with him for you to develop this property, correct? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Good. And the property now is a vacant lot with dimensions 24 feet wide and 100 feet deep. Yes. And you plan to build a three unit residential building on the property. Correct. And you also plan to live in the first floor unit with your husband and your three children. Correct. The one that duplex down, the first floor that duplex down. Correct. Uh, Mary, also correct that uh, I mentioned there was a community meeting in connection with this project before the zoning change? Uh, yes. And you attended that meeting, correct? Yes, I have. Yes. And we showed the same plan at that meeting that we're talking about here today. Yes, we do. Uh, Mary, true that you signed an affidavit in connection with the case here today? Yes, I have. And if I were to continue quiz you, would your answers be consistent with that affidavit? Yes, it would be. Mr. Chairman, I think that's all I have of Mary, unless she had specific questions. Um, no, I don't. No, 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 Mary, Mary. I'm, I'm, yes. You're good. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I think that's all I have of Mary. Yeah, so I'll, um, we'll circle back again, but any questions from the board right now? Okay, you can go ahead with John Hanna. So John Hanna, you there, John? I am. Uh, state your name and your address. John Hanna, president of Hanna Architects, Inc., 180 West Washington, Chicago, Illinois, licensed architect, state of Illinois. And you are the project architect? I am. Thanks, and John. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Good, John. Is it true that the subject property is a vacant lot with dimensions 24 feet wide, 100 feet deep? That is correct. And the applicant's plan is to build a three unit residential building on the property. Yes. And John, just a small point, also true that this subject property, this lot is across the street from the exit ramp of the Dan Ryan Expressway. Uh, correct. Good. Um, so John, 
the, um, the two cases we have, the first case has to do with the, the, the front setback. And John, is it true, as I mentioned, that in this particular zoning district, to calculate the required front setback, they allow you to take the depth of the two properties on either side and take the average depth of those properties? The depth of the front yard, yes. Exactly. Also true, if one of those properties is a vacant lot in this district, they would apply a 12-foot setback to that vacant lot? That is correct. So actually, plug in the 12 feet in the computation, the city re would require a seven-foot front setback. That's correct. Also true that the existing buildings to the south of the subject property are all set back roughly about four feet from that front property line. Uh, there's an average on the drawing, so. About, about generally. Yeah, about, about. So you're asking to set back the subject property four feet from that front property line. That's correct, which is about one foot set back from the building to the south. So Good. Yes. That would allow you roughly, roughly to line up with the existing buildings to the south of the subject property. That's correct. And really no purpose served to set back seven feet. Um, no. Good. Um, and John, uh, side, side point, um, we're requesting the front uh, setback relief. You do comply with the, fully comply with the side setbacks. That is correct. That is correct. Yes. Good. And John, the second case is the rear yard open space. And again, our unique circumstance, we have this short lot, which is only 100 feet deep. Correct. And 100 feet is only 80% of the standard 125 foot lot. Correct. Uh, John, am I also true that the city on the open space, in addition to require a minimum square footage, also requires that the open space portion have a depth of 10 feet. That's correct. So your, your hardship here is considering the front setback, the length, the depth of the building, the rear port system, and of course the parking at the rear of the lot because we do provide the required parking, really not enough room to comply with the city required rear yard open space. Right, and we're also complying with the rear yard setback for the building too. We do, we do re re comply. And John, uh, is it true that you've got some design features that do offer some open space for the occupants? Oh, that's correct. We have rear decks in the back of the building, and then we have a rooftop deck for the top unit. Right. And John, also true that those decks, the rooftop deck and the other decks uh, would provide private open space for those occupants. That's correct. And actually, that private open space is sometimes more valuable for the people than a common backyard in a three-unit building. Right. We've seen that the people don't use these rear yards for these three-unit buildings. Good. So, John, your opinion, is the open space provided by your drawing adequate for this building? It is. Good. And then, John, I think that'll do it. Did you sign an affidavit in connection with this case here today? I did. And if I continue to question you, would your answers be consistent with that affidavit? Uh, they would. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have of John, unless you've got um, uh, some questions. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Questions from the board? All right. Um, we've got everything we need. So thank you very much, Ms. Pua, for your time. And we'll take this under consideration. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move now to calendar number 26-22-Z. Um, so if anyone is on to object to 26-22-Z, raise your hand. We'll get you promoted. Um, and Counselor Amy Degnan, whenever you're here, let us know. Hello, this is Mark. Hello. Hey, Amy, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much, Chairman. Um, just want to make sure that I have Tim McLaugh. It looks like there's people on from the prior case. Yeah, they'll, they'll stay on. And there's sometimes a lag, but I do see Tim McLaughlin is on. Okay. Um, and uh, Andrew Wang. Andrew's on as well. Okay, great. Is it okay to start then? Yep, go right ahead. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. 
My name is Amy Dagnan. I'm an attorney with Georges and Sinawiki with offices at 20 South Clark in Chicago. I'm appearing for the applicant, Tim McLaughlin, the property owner on the application 26-22-Z for 2159 North Claremont. I'm joined today by Tim McLaughlin, the applicant, and Andrew Wang, the architect. The subject property is zoned RT4 and currently includes a two-story, two-unit residential building with a detached garage. Tim is proposing to build a three-story, two-unit masonry residence with a rear three-story open deck and a two-car detached garage with roof decks access from the landing of the rear stairs. Tim will make this residence his home. Tim has owned the property since 2004 and lived at the property from 2004 through 2010. Requiring more living space, Tim moved out of the building but stayed within a few blocks of the building. Ultimately, Tim decided to make what is likely the most significant personal investment to improve this property and make it his home. Tim was very conscious in working with the architect to design a home that will fit well within the context of the neighborhood. Tim is not proposing to build any to any extremes or to have a building with an unusual layout that is incongruent with the neighborhood. Care has been taken to have the home fit in the context of the neighborhood. In fact, the footprint of the proposed building is notably similar to the existing building that has been there for decades. The subject property is considerably a substandard lot. The subject property measures 23 by 100, rather than the standard city lot of 25 by 125. As such, we are here today to ask to reduce the required rear setback from 30 to 22 feet, and the north side setback from two feet to zero feet, and a combined side setback from 4.6 feet to three feet. The rear setback is to allow for the rear open deck and connecting staircase to the garage roof deck on the lot that is 25 feet shorter than the standard lot. Per the multiple photos in our finding of fact, the rear yard open deck and garage roof deck are very common in this neighborhood. The side setback is to allow for a more standard home width on a lot that is two feet narrower than a standard lot. Again, the footprint of the proposed building is notably similar to the existing building that has been there for decades. I'd like to note that Tim is not before the board today requesting any increase in height and or FAR. We have designed the home within those requirements of the RT4. Again, it's because of the considerable substandard lot that we are requesting relief of the setbacks. If the subject property was a standard city lot, we would not be requiring or requesting the same zoning relief. The property is located in the 32nd Ward, and we have discussed the project with Alderman Wagespeck, and he is in support of the project. Tim has also spoken to many neighbors, and we are not aware of any objectors to this case. If it's okay, I'd like to call Tim McLaughlin as my first witness. Yep, go right ahead. Tim, when you're on, if you could just state your name and address, I'll quickly swear you in. Yep, uh, Tim McLaughlin, 1855 North Damon, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tim, you're the property owner at 2159 North Claremont. You propose to build a three-story, two-unit residence on that property, and you propose to live in this as your home. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And is everything I stated in my earlier statement consistent with the facts? Yes. And you were kind enough to submit an affidavit in support of this application that was submitted with our proposed finding of fact that addressed the criteria for the variation. If called upon to testify further, would you testify in accordance with that affidavit? Yes, I would. Mr. Chairman, unless there are questions for Mr. McLaughlin, I'd like to call Mr. Wang. Any questions right now for Mr. McLaughlin? Okay, thank you. Sir, I was just asking the board if they have any questions right now. If not, we'll circle back. A uh, quick question. This is Commissioner Esposito. Uh, you, you said the owner has spoken to many neighbors. Can you just clarify what that means? <laughs> yeah, uh, I- Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tim. I can say, I I, uh, I know one other neighbor on the block. I, it's been about 10 years since I've been, uh, been living there. <clears throat> I spoke to one neighbor on the block. She gave me the contact info for the immediate neighbors to the south. 
who I contacted and informed them. And then the neighbor to the north, actually, they just sold the building. So I've been trying to reach out to that neighbor as well. Okay, thank you. Any others? Okay, we'll circle back again, but Councillor, you can uh, go forward. Okay, thank you. Um, my next witness is Mr. Andrew Wang. Hello, uh, my name is Andrew Wang, 5639 North Tallman Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60659. Thank you, Mr. Wang. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wang, you're a licensed Illinois architect and have been for many years, is that correct? <laughs> yes. And you've, you're familiar with the property at 2159 North Claremont and the surrounding area, is that correct? Yes, I am. Um, is everything that I just described correct? Yes. Uh, in your opinion, strict compliance with the regulations and standards of the zoning ordinance would create practical difficulties or hardship for the subject property, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And in your opinion, the requested variations are consistent with the stated purpose of the zoning ordinance. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. In your opinion, the property cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only in accordance with the zoning code. Is that correct? Yes. And in your opinion, practical hardships are due to the unique circumstances and not generally applicable to other properties. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. In your opinion, the variations would not alter the essential neighborhood of the character. Is that correct? Yes. And in your opinion, the physical surrounding shapes or topographical condition of the specific property involved would result in particular hardship upon the property owner more than just a mere inconvenience. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And in your opinion, the conditions upon the relief base are not generally applicable to other properties. Is that correct? That's correct. In your opinion, the particular hardships have not been created by any person having an interest in the property. Is that correct? Yes. In, in your opinion, the granting of these variations would not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other properties or improvements in the neighborhood. Is that correct? Yes. And in your opinion, the proposed variations will not impair adequate light or air to adjacent properties or substantially increase the congestion on public streets or increase the danger of fire or public safety or diminish property values within the neighborhood. Is that correct? Uh, yes. <clears throat> and you submitted an uh, affidavit in support of the application that was submitted with our findings of fact that addressed the criteria of the variation. If called upon to testify further, would you testify in accordance with that affidavit? Yes, I would. And if the variations are approved, would you submit a permit application in accordance with the plans we've submitted and otherwise in accordance with the zoning ordinance and the municipal code of Chicago? Yes, we would. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, we've concluded with our witnesses. We'd like to thank the board for your time and ask for your favorable approval of the requested variations and we're available for any questions. Great, thanks counselor and thank you everyone. Um, are there any questions from the board? We will take this under consideration. Um, and again, thank you everyone for your time and have a great weekend. Thank Good you weekend. very much for hearing us. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, we're gonna to go to calendar number 27-22-S. Um, I'll go ahead and read the department's recommendation as uh, Councilor Parsky gets settled. Um, and if anyone is here again to object for 27-22-S, just raise your hand and we'll get you promoted. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed nail salon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is John Pekarski. I'm an attorney with offices at 55 West Monroe Street. And uh, this afternoon, I represent John O'Flaherty, who I've represented for quite a while. Uh, the uh, property in question is 2142 West Division. It is zone B32. And it is a uh, kind of a standard uh, first floor commercial 
with three dwelling units, uh, with dwelling units over, I'm not saying three, but with dwelling units over. Uh, it was constructed in uh, 2006 and uh, a, uh, it was uh, the first floor uh, was owned by, still owned by John, uh, was used as a, a nail parlor uh, from 2006 to uh, roughly to, uh, December of, of 2020. Unfortunately, the uh, tenant uh, didn't see fit to renew their license and then left us with uh, uh, a, a vacant uh, first floor unit. Uh, John, who does have a, uh, another uh, salon suite uh, in Park Ridge, uh, has decided that he's going to uh, seek to uh, create uh, a uh, salon at this location for manicure, pedicure, hair, and waxing, and will lease out the five chairs and the six uh, pedicure stands. Um, as, as I said, he does have a, uh, a similar operation in Park Ridge, which has 22 suites. Uh, the pro uh, property will be open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. Uh, it's contemplated that there will be uh, five employees and a manager. Uh, and uh, essentially, we are replacing what was existing there since, nine, as of, since 2006. Um, if, if they're uh, with the uh, board's permission, I would call uh, John O'Flaherty. John, yep. are you there? I also have with me Mr. Joseph Ryan, our appraiser. And Don, I think you're just muted. I do see you as a panelist. Is I am muted? No, no, the other John, John O. Okay. We've got video now, just uh, you're just still muted. He doesn't know how to unmute him. So muted uh, in the lower left hand corner is a kind of a red microphone. If you scroll to that and then press, you, you should be. Actually, John, you're, you're getting a prompt from the host that asking you to unmute if you just click on that. John, can you hear me? John O'Flaherty, can you hear me? You, it, it. I believe that John O'Flaherty, you are muted. You're turning your video on off, so the microphone is just left of the video icon. All right, maybe, uh, I don't know if you can hear us. I'd say, John, if you could just call in um, if you're not able to unmute. Um, I could go to my second witness, Mr. Joseph Ryan. So the pro we've just got to make sure that we've got the applicant on where he can speak. And I'd rather confirm Certainly. that first. Certainly. Um, 
John, you can also just log out of the meeting and join back in again. John O'Flaherty. Yeah, yeah, you stay. You stay, John. Stay, <laughs> <Jump Clark. laughs> We've got you for the next one too, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, there's another John in the attendees. It's just John. There's no last name. Um, oh, and we've got a phone call now. So maybe he's that 773 number. John O'Flaherty, if you're on the phone now, please press star six on your phone. May have been easier the other way. Hello. There we go. Uh, how's that, guys? Yep. Happiness. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, don't worry. Don't apologize worry. for that. No worries. We'll get um. We'll get right into it. So, could you just state your name and address, please? John O'Flaherty, 209 South Vine Street, Park Ridge, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. John, were you uh, on uh, the internet when uh, I made the introduction uh, and, and uh, talked about the project in question? Yes, I heard all that. Okay. Uh, you have owned, you built the property and have owned this uh, uh, unit uh, since 2006. Is that correct? That's correct. I finished comp completion of construction in 2005, and we opened up this nail salon in 2006 with, a, with an operator. And then the operator left you high and dry and not renewing their license and not telling you that they're moving. Is that correct? Correct. So they, you are now seeking uh, to create uh, what is essentially a salon suite with five chairs and six uh, pedicure stands uh, to uh, be operated uh, for pedicures, manicures, uh, hair and waxing. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, your hours of operation will be uh, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m.? That is correct. Seven days per week. That's correct. And you intend to employ three to five uh, employees or three or five, three to five operators and a manager. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And I have prepared on your behalf an affidavit which uh, goes into the criteria for the uh, special use that we are seeking. Did I? Yes, you did. And uh, you signed it. I did. And you read it. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay. And if I ask you the same questions that appear on that affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? They would be the same. Okay. I have no further uh, questions for uh, John O'Flaherty. Sorry, no, I was I was muted. Um, any questions from the board for um, John O'Flaherty before we uh, we get to um, Joe Ryan? Hey, I um, is my next witness uh, Joseph Ryan? Yeah, John. John, just one second. I think we've got a question. Sure, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. That's okay. So, Commissioner Esposito, go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is Commissioner Esposito. Just quickly, could Mr. O'Flaherty describe his experience? uh with this kind of business yeah sure so um in another property in park ridge again we uh, recently converted to the salon suites um so um we, what we have there is 22 different individual spaces that we manage on a daily basis 
um, 22 individuals and running their, their, their salons, anything from nails to massage to hair, um, esthetician work. So we've been doing that for the last three plus years. Um, in this case, this is a storefront that I've owned and built, like I said, many years ago in 2005. Um, we lost our tenant as soon as the pandemic happened. At the same time, we realized that we, we didn't have a license or they let the license lapse. By the time we got around to open up a space, we realized this and 12 months had, had gone by. So we're going to take a very similar business. Instead of doing individual salon suites, it's just going to be another one, um, one operator in this space here. Um, so I guess that's, that's my experience with running and managing um, health and wellness. So that will be an operator other than yourself. Is is that correct? It's undetermined right now. Um, we we have some interest from other operators that would come to us. What we've had as a as a kind of a, a downfall here. We did have some interest from an individual last year. That individual didn't want to spend the money or all the steps to get to where we are today. So me as the owner. We're, we're, we're making, we're paving the path so that we can make that decision depending on now what the board says, whether we get approval to maintain this space with, under the same use as it's been since it's, it's uh, construction. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board before we go to Joe Ryan? Okay, Councillor, go right ahead. Um, Joe is is both Joe is sworn in and acknowledged for his expertise. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Yep. Please state your name, address, and occupation. Joseph M. Ryan, President, uh, LaSalle Appraisal Group, with offices at ninety four fifty five South Hoyne Avenue in Chicago. At my request, have you examined the subject site and the surrounding uh, environs of that subject site? Yes, very familiar with the area on West Division. Can you describe the subject site and, and its uh, uh, environs? Uh, the subject site's uh, 25 by 125 uh, interior lot located on West Division Street, west of uh, uh, Damon Avenue. <clears throat> uh, it's existing building conforms to um, uh, all the other buildings up and down West Division. Uh, there is Certainly other uh, personal service uses along West Division, um, and I examine the uh, uh, demographics for the property and uh, uh, the population within a mile is over 68,000 people and uh, average income is just under 115,000. So there's certainly uh, the density and uh, economic income to support uh, multiple personal service uses. And are you familiar with the criteria uh, for a special <clears throat> special use? I'm very familiar. And uh, have you have I prepared on your behalf uh, an affidavit listing those criteria and your answer to them? Yes. And you have prepared a, a consulting report also uh, in combination with uh, the affidavit. Is that correct? I have, yes. And if I ask you the same questions that appear on the affidavit, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? They would be the same. I have no further questions of Mr. Ryan. Great, thank you. Um, I've got another question for the applicant. Um, just in regards to what his process is um, with cosmetologists. When you rent out one of your um, suites, do you do a check on the cosmetologist um, being up on licensing and such? Yes. Um, so they have I I licenses from IDFPR. So I think it's IDFPR, but um, yes. Um, but yeah, so we part of the application and our lease process, they have to give to us their their license number, as well as a heart or a copy of their, their state license. Okay. So okay. they're all licensed, they're all licensed and they're, they're paying annual uh, licensing fees to the state for that. Okay, great. Other questions from the board for the applicant?
Okay, thank you very much. We're going to take this under consideration. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And I know, uh, uh, I know, John Pekarski, we've got you for, for another one. Um, so we can transition right into that. This is calendar numbers 28-22-S, 29-22-Z, and 30-22-C. Um, as I read the department's recommendation, if anyone is on to object to these matters, just raise your hand and we'll make sure that you're promoted. Okay, so for calendar number 28-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Department of Planning and Development is not opposed to the establishment of a dwelling unit below the second floor for a new second story addition to the existing two story with basement banquet hall and general restaurant use building, provided that the special provided that the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and drawings dated July 7th, 2021, prepared by Grand Designs LLC architecture. Uh, again, uh, good afternoon or evening, whatever it is. Uh, my name is John Pekarski, for the record. I'm an attorney with offices at 55 West Monroe Street. And uh, this uh, today's uh, matter is uh, regarding 2105 West 95th Street, uh, the home of Barocco's Pizza. Uh, it's one of seven Barocco pizzas located on the greater southwest side of the city of Chicago. Uh, in, in its history, uh, this property was derelict uh, and was uh, taken over by the city uh, and uh, ultimately deeded to uh, Mr. Baracco uh, and uh, subsequent to his taking it over, uh, the Baracco family completely gutted the entire operation, uh, adding kitchen, plumbing, sewer, electric, uh, AV, HVAC, bathrooms, carpeting, etc., uh, to the tune of a uh, uh, million eight hundred thousand um, dollars. The portion of the property that we are dealing with is in the uh, north west corner, which uh, is the site of a um, garage. Uh, it was built as a, as a garage uh, and it, it runs uh, along Hamilton Street. The uh, owner uh, realized, has been using it uh, constantly uh, for storage, of, of materials and, and food and equipment, uh, there is a basement under this uh, garage as well. Uh, it is not shown in this picture. However, uh, there we go. Uh, it is around the corner. There we go. That's, that's the garage in question. Uh, it's, it's basically useless. Uh, or under uh, underemployed uh, as as far as the uh, restaurant is concerned, uh, my client would like to uh, completely rehab it, uh, adding a second floor and make a uh, an apartment out of the uh, garage. Uh, they will be taking out the uh, curb cut uh, and creating uh, a, a residential atmosphere. Um, as you can see, uh, this uh, uh, location has really no relationship to the 95th Street address, except that it's uh, part of the building. Uh, it takes its, its entire character from Hamilton, which is a, a totally residential street. Uh, we believe that uh, the proposal will uh, enhance uh, the, uh, the, the restaurant building, uh, making uh, it use, useful uh, and uh, will uh, add to the quality of life along Hamilton. Uh, the basement of the uh, proposed uh, single uh, one unit 
uh, will still be used uh, for the storage of uh, materials uh, for the restaurant. Uh, I have with me uh, Vince Baracco, uh, who is the owner, uh, as well as Mark Pelletieri, uh, who is the project architect, as well as uh, Mr. Joseph Ryan. Uh, we are seeking three parts of the relief. Uh, the first being a special use to have dwelling units below the uh, second floor. Uh, the second is for parking relief. Uh, so that uh, we don't have to provide any additional parking. Uh, we have a 22 car parking lot uh, right there. Uh, and then the uh, uh, third is uh, for a rear yard variation. Uh, as you can see, the property is built uh, to the rear lot line. Uh, with that, um, I would call as my first witness, Vince Bracco. Vince, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, you're the owner of the property in question, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and uh, you purchased- uh, Oh, and I'll swear, I'll swear Vince in. So Vince- Oh, I'm sorry. You, that's okay. Can you state your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Vincent Baracco, uh, address 3043 West 111th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60655. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. And uh, you are uh, Vince Baracco of the renowned Baracco family that uh, has uh, its pizza restaurants all over the greater southwest side of the city of Chicago. Is that correct? <laughs> That's correct. Uh, may, may you continue and prosper. Thank you. Uh, now, it's my understanding you bought this from the city uh, and it was in uh, 2016, is that correct? That's correct. And then after you bought it, you completely gutted everything, completely remodeled it, uh, adding, uh, in remodeling the kitchen, plumbing, sewer, electric, HVAC, bathrooms, carpeting, etc to the tune of about a million eight hundred thousand dollars is that correct that's correct and uh in the far uh south uh west corner uh of your property is a garage which is attached to the uh to the uh building is that correct correct and the garage is really underperforming is that correct that's correct has basically been used for uh, passive storage uh, and uh, it, it really it doesn't add anything uh, to the uh, to the property uh, is that correct that is correct and you would like to create uh, a, uh, a livable uh, dwelling unit uh, adding a second story is that correct that is correct in order to do that, we need a special use to allow uh, a dwelling unit below the second story, as well as rear yard and parking variations. Is that correct? That's correct. And you will be taking out the uh, curb cut that exists so as to create a, uh, a, a much more residential feel to uh, th this area of uh, Hamilton. Is that correct? That is correct. In fact, the rest of Hamilton is all residential. Am I, uh, am I correct? Uh, you are correct. Okay. Um, with that, uh, the property is zone B31. Uh, and I have no further questions of, of uh, Mr. Baracco. Great, thank you. Any questions from the board for Mr. Baracco before um, before we go to um, Joe Ryan and Mark? I okay, call, yeah, Councilor, you can continue. Perfect. I would call as my next witness, uh, Mr. Joseph Ryan. Please state your name, address, and occupation. Joseph M. Ryan, MAI President, LaSalle Appraisal Group, with the offices at. 9455 South Hoyne Avenue, which by the way is across the street from the subject property. 
I take it you had no trouble uh, making an on-site inspection? None whatsoever. And knowing your and my propensity, I assume that you have uh, frequently used their uh, services. Is that correct? I have. <laughs> Is that an endorsement? Uh, very much so. Oh, we thank you for that. The Baracco family thanks you. <laughs> okay. Now, Joe, uh, are you familiar with the standards for a special use? Yes, I am. Okay. Concerning the south, um, strike that the northwest corner of the property in question where the garage is located. Uh, what would you characterize the uh, character of uh, Hamilton Avenue at that location? Hamilton, south of the subject property to 111th on either side of the street is residential. North of the property to the Dan Ryan's Woods, uh, either side of the street is residential. Uh, the, the commercial properties along 95th Street extend from 95th Street to the alley and then is residential both ways. So the depth of the lots on 95th Street, which are commercial, are approximately 125 feet. Um, and then it, it, it's residential either way, north or south. Now, uh, in, in your opinion, would the uh, proposed use in any way alter the essential character of the neighborhood in which it's located? Uh, no, because this is on a residential street. Uh, uh, the, the rest of the property is or orientated to the north fronting 95th Street. It's on the south side of 95th Street. So no, this is uh, residential use will not be incompatible at this location of the property. And uh, at my request, uh, and, and strike that, at your request, have I prepared an affidavit uh, concerning the uh, special use and the variations sought uh, from uh, the Baracco's Pizza? Yes, I included all the uh, criteria in my report and addressed it in that report. Okay. And uh, if, if I ask you the same questions that appear in the affidavit that I have prepared, would your answers be the same or substantially similar? They would be the same. Okay. I have no further questions of Mr. Ryan. Okay, any questions for Mr. Ryan before we um, go to Mr. Pelletieri? Okay, Councilor, go right ahead. The, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm misunderstanding. What, what are you requiring of me? Oh, sorry. So I, I note that you have um, Mark Pelletieri on. Did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, I have the architect, Mr. Mark Pelletieri. Uh, Mark, are you there? I am, yes. Okay. Great. I'll, uh, give Mark's, I'll give Mark's warning. So Mark, can you state your name and address, please? Mark Pelletieri, 333 South Maple Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois, 60302. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay. Mark, you're the project architect for the proposal? Yes. Uh, can you briefly describe the proposal? Uh, we are proposing to convert an existing garage to um, to a, a single residential unit with a second story addition. So the second story, the second floor is the bedroom, and the first floor is the uh, kitchen, living room, bathroom. And uh, in addition to this, you will be removing the curb cut that currently exists uh, on Hamilton. Is that correct? Yeah, the curb cut and the overhead door, and uh, instead of the overhead door up to a common, you know, residential scale, sized and height uh, windows that will be for the uh, proposed living room. And will the proposal be in any way uh, altering the, uh, the essential character of the neighborhood in which it's located? No, no, it's all 
all bungalows down the street. So it's, it'll be in keeping with the, the scale and character. In your opinion, will the uh, proposal in, in any way injure surrounding property values? No, it, it, it'll actually make them better, I believe. So there's less of a commercial feel to that corner. So that the entire of Hamilton Avenue at that location will then be uh, uh, basically residential. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I have no. Uh, I have prepared on your behalf an affidavit. Is that correct? Yes. And um, if I ask you the same questions that appear in the affidavit, will your answers be the same or substantially similar? They will. I have no further questions of Mark. Great, thank you. Um, um, any questions from the board for anyone that we've heard from on this matter? Okay, thank you everyone. And we are going to take this under consideration. Have thank a good you. weekend. You too, you too. Okay, so with that, I wanna call a 15 minute recess. Then we've just got a few left. So. Um, I move that we reconvene at 4 p.m. Central Standard. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. Great. I vote yes. See you have a good report.
All right, give us just a minute as all the board members get back. Okay, um, we, we are all good. So I move that we reconvene this January 21st, 2022 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Commissioner Toya seconds, seconds Commissioner Paul. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes. Uh, we are back and we are in the final stretch. So let's go right to calendar number 31-22-S. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the department's recommendation. As I do so, if you happen to be here to object to this matter, um, please just raise your hand and we'll make sure you get the opportunity to speak. Okay. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish a 215 seat religious assembly use provided, number one, the special use is issued solely to the applicant, Awaken Church Chicago, Number two, the development is consistent with the design and layout plans and drawings dated January 19th, 2022, prepared by PASMA Group Architects. Number three, the temporary use of the ground floor for assembly is limited to 12 months or upon completion of the second floor renovations and elevator, whichever is sooner. And number four, the storefront windows remain activated and are not screened or otherwise blocked. Great, and really quick, just to sort through um, a couple things. Um, looks like we have the applicant. Um, I wanna see, um, there's a, a Miss Bonnie Sanchez Carlson is raising their hand. So Bonnie, I'll, I'll promote you and just confirm that you're on for this matter. Okay, so Bonnie, you should be able to speak now if you unmute. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm not here to object. Uh, I am more concerned that I that I haven't seen this proposal. And the question is, when was it presented to the community? Uh, my name is Bonnie Sanchez Carlson, and I represent the Near South Planning Board. So Great. not voicing an opinion, just here to listen to the presentation and express my concern about that. Okay, and you know what I'm gonna do then? I'm still gonna treat it process-wise as if you were an objector because that will give you the opportunity after the applicant gives the case in chief to, um, to state questions, ask questions of the applicant, et cetera. So what we'll do is we'll start with the applicant. They'll give their, their case in chief. The board will ask questions the whole time. Then we'll move back to you. 
And you can either state that you object or state that you don't object um, or ask questions of the applicant. Um, and then we'll turn back to the, the applicant and um, allow for final questions and, um, and close it out. Does that sound good? Thank, thank yep. you. Great. Um, okay, so there's one more person um, that we're trying to identify. I believe there's someone whose name on here is owner. Um, so owner, if you unmute yourself and just explain who you are so we can confirm your, your, whether you're here for this matter. Hi, um, you're unmuted. So whoever's under the, the title owner, could you just speak and explain who you are? I hear like a machine kind of. Um, uh, someone just confirmed that they can't hear it as well, that it's not just me. Okay. Yes, Chairman, the, 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 this person is not speaking even though- I'm Hello? Hi, yeah, yeah, who, who is this? Okay, so I just had a quick question. I've been waiting all day, seven hours, um, for my uh, particular um, parcel to come available, which is the Starbucks. Can okay, you let so, me know when that would be taking place? Yeah, so again, this is, you, you just gotta wait until your matter comes up and the Starbucks has continued. So it looks like it's a few from now. Um, but we're on a different matter right now. So I'm going to. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna... Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but I was just sure. curious uh, how much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute you. We're going to go forward with this one. Thanks. Um, okay. So there's always craziness after a break, I swear. Um, let's make sure one more opportunity. Um, anyone who's objecting to the matter we are on, 31 22 S, please just raise your hand. All right, Councillor, thank you, and you can go right ahead. Okay, good afternoon, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Kate Duncan. I'm an attorney with offices located at 71 South Wacker Drive, and I'm appearing this afternoon on behalf of the applicant Awakened Chicago Church in connection with a special use application for the property located at 1829 South State Street. The subject property is zoned DX5 Downtown Mixed Use District, and it's currently improved with a vacant commercial building. Um, I have with me today three different witnesses. Um, I have Rob Campbell, who is the lead pastor of Awaken Chicago. I have Doug Pasma, who is our architect, and I have Mr. Terrence O'Brien, who is our MAI appraiser. Um, Awaken Chicago currently operates its church, uh, holding Sunday services at the Congress Plaza Hotel, uh, and it has business offices at 1101 South State Street, but it is seeking to move its operations to this location at 1829 South State. Um, applicant is seeking to reuse the existing building located on the property for its new church and will be doing some interior remodeling only to adapt uh, the structure to fit the proposed church use. Um, the applicant is proposing to do this in phases. It, it's hoping to move in, you know, very quickly after some very minor renovations on the ground floor. And then um, over the course of a little bit of time, it will renovate the second story and be able to have the actual assembly use on the second story. Um, the applicant is also going to, uh, so ultimately there will be a 215 seat assembly space for church services on the second story. Uh, applicant will also create offices, classrooms, meeting space, and a warming kitchen on the first story once it moves up to the second story. Applicant will hold its primary services on Sundays from 8.30 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Other activities during the week uh, include ministry meetings, children and student activities, group studies, and meetings both during the day and evening hours. The total proposed use of the church will be approximately 60 hours per week. And it's expected that there will be uh, six full-time and part-time staff at the building. Uh, no parking is required for the religious assembly use in the DX5 zoning district. However, applicant is going to be leasing some property and making some improvements to some property at 1801 South State to serve the church and uh, at some parking. Um, please note, okay, I already went into that. So um, I have with me, as I said, my three witnesses. I'd like to start with Mr. with the lead pastor, Mr. Rob Campbell. 
Great. Mr. Mr. Campbell, can you, yeah, can you please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Campbell, can you state your name and address, please? Yes, my name is Robert Campbell, and uh, my residence is 1101 South State Street, apartment 2400, Chicago 60605. Thank you. And you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. So, Mr. Campbell, can you tell us your occupation? Yeah, I'm the lead pastor at Awaken Chicago Church. Okay, and can you, um, can you tell me, are you familiar with the parcel of property that's the subject of this hearing today? Yes, I am. And how is the property currently improved? Uh, it's a two-story um, building, commercial building. Um, and so are you familiar with the special use that we have filed for this uh, subject property? Yes, I am. And can you please describe for the board a little bit about the current needs of Awaken Chicago Church? Sure. Uh, we started as a church, uh, really launched the church in April of uh, 2021. And we began holding in-person services uh, at the Congress Plaza Hotel on Sunday mornings, um, which is, you know, our, our community is appreciative of, but it, we're limited to just meeting on Sunday mornings. So the other aspects of church community life, gathering for meetings or gathering for community or uh, allowing our students to meet, uh, having the opportunity to interact with uh, the neighborhood, all those things uh, we can't do just because we're running the space on uh, Sunday morning. So we're really looking for a space that we can make our church home. Okay. And so can you tell us a little bit about 1829 South mm -hmm. State and how you've selected that location? Yeah. Um, so our, in our current church, we have people in our church community from all over Chicago and even outside of Chicago, but uh, the greatest concentration is sort of in that South Loop area. So it's familiar to us. Uh, I live in the South Loop, but we we're looking for space that would allow us to create a assembly space as well as what we'd call auxiliary ministry space, the opportunity to hold classes and children's ministry and student ministries and such. And um, we looked at a number of properties. This one really seemed to meet our needs. It was in a location. It's near public transportation. Most of our folks use public transportation, both buses and uh, the L. And so, um, yeah, we were really excited about this opportunity to um, become part of the South Loop neighborhood and um, make it, again, our primary church home. And so what do you propose to do with the property that's requiring the, the requested special use? Yeah, so we really want to make it a religious assembly, which is why I believe we need the, or use it for religious assembly, which is why we're seeking the special use. And, and, so, and we would, so, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, and so can you tell the board a little bit about the improvements that you're proposing? Yeah. So ultimately, um, ultimately, what we'd like to do is create the primary assembly space up on the second floor. And uh, there'd be space up there for, so we'd have to improve the, you know, put in toilets, things like that, improve the elevator, put in additional stairwells. Um, and then our children's ministry and community space would be on the first floor. Uh, just, you know, candidly, we're just not in a place financially to do that all at once. So our thinking is to do this in phases. So we would move into the first floor and that works for us because right now, and uh, we only have uh, usually run about 80 to 90 people on a Sunday morning. Uh, we have additional people. We also stream services, so we have additional people who join us online. But uh, the thought would be we'd move into the do enough work on the first floor to make it available, useful for assembly space as well as for our children's ministries. Begin doing uh, using this location, and then do the improvements to the second floor, and then move the assembly space upstairs. And what are the hours of operation for the proposed church? Yeah. On Sundays, you know, which is when, you know, most of us gather, uh, is like 8.30 to 1, uh, roughly, is when uh, people are there. Uh, but we'll also be using the space. We'll have our offices there. We would expect uh, the church community to use that. Uh, we, you know, in the past when I've been, avail uh, been involved with other churches, we've made our space available to members of the community. So uh, for gatherings and for meetings and things like that. So children's ministry, students' ministry, creative arts, uh, we also record online content, so we'd be using the space for that, but really a, an opportunity to gather and um, be part of the community, South Loop community. How many, how many employees will you have at the church? Yeah, we expect to probably uh, to have six people there. Okay, and, and I think you described the demand for the church in the area, but um, so you can you tell us, just go back to that a little bit and tell us sure. about the demand in the area? Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, of our church community, we draw from all over Chicago, but the greatest concentration of our folks are in the South Loop area. So it just makes it um, 
you know, accessible to a lot of the people in our church community. And this location as well is avail is accessible to public transportation, both rail and buses. Um, so, yeah. And Rob, can you tell me, have we had conversations with Alderman Dowell about this matter? Yes, I believe your office has. Yeah, and, and um, I know I, I can tell you we have had a lot of conversations with Alderman Dowell who expressed that as, as long as that we, we could find some parking that was convenient in the neighborhood, um, she would be satisfied and she would um, have no objection to this application. So, and, and that's consistent. And so Rob, did you go find some parking in the neighborhood and did you sign a lease for some parking? We did. We were leasing a vacant lot north of the building that would be uh, used for parking on Sunday mornings. Um, so Rob, is the proposed church in the interest of public convenience and, it, and so it won't have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood? Correct. Okay, and is the proposed church compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site planning, building scale, project design, operating characteristics? Yes, it is. Okay, and is the proposed church designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort? Yes. And will the proposed church be compliant with all standards of the zoning ordinance? Yes, we will. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any further questions of Mr. Campbell. Uh, if the board has any questions, we'll entertain those at this time. Uh, I do. Uh, this is uh, Sam Toya. Uh, you, you mentioned, and you kind of drove it home too. You mentioned you mentioned you met with Alderman Dow, which is great, and she said she's okay with it if you get the parking. I always like to hear if you met with the local alderman, but I always always like to hear if you met with the local community group, uh, business group, like we have Bonnie on uh, here right now, the near South planning. Did you meet with any of them? Um, you didn't bring that up, but you did drive. Uh, the you know, and, and I apologize for that. No, I did not. We did talk to the uh, owner of the property on either side of us because we have the buildings on either side of us. So we did talk to them, but no, I did not. That was a miss on my part. And, you know, because and, just so you know, I mean, it's great. We always want to hear what the alderman says, but it, that has an impact, but but that's not our only, you know, our only impact. You know, this administration wants to hear what the business, you know, groups think, what the community groups think, and then what the alderman thinks as well. So I'd like to, you know, I'd like to, obviously I'll ask Bonnie this because no one knows the near south side better than Bonnie. And if you've been there, maybe you do know Bonnie. Do, do, you, do you know Bonnie? She's, you know. I know of her. Yeah, because she's really, I've known Bonnie for years. She knows this part of the city better than anyone I know. So I'm just surprised that you didn't have a conversation with Bonnie. She was there before the alderman, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. So, and the way it looks like the alderman might be moving up and out. So she's going to be there after the alderman too. So anyway, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Bonnie questions when we get to Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions no. for Mr. Campbell? Yeah, any questions from the board for Mr. Campbell, or else we'll uh, we'll go to um, either Mr. O'Brien or Pasma. Okay, go right ahead, Kate. Okay, I'd like to move on to Mr. Pasma, please. Great. Mr. Pasma, will you st please state your name and address? Uh, my name is Doug Pasma. I'm at live at 35 Inverness Court, Lake Bluff, Illinois. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Pasma, can you tell us? Are you a, uh, Can you tell us what your occupation is? I'm an architect. And are you familiar with the application for special use that's the subject of this of the hearing today? I am. Okay. And so, directing your attention to the drawings that we've submitted, can you please describe for the board the manner in which the subject property is proposed to be improved? I think, like, uh, I don't have a whole lot to add to what Rob did. He did a good job describing what we're planning on doing there, but. Uh, the, the drawings show uh, an assembly space on the second floor that would be uh, accessible via stairways and an, es and an elevator with uh, bathrooms to, to support that use and access to, to support that use. In, on the main floor would be uh, uh, some classrooms for kids and social space uh, for before and after services. And that's the overall plan. The initial move-in plan though, uh, again, as Rob stated, was to uh, show uh, the uh, assembly space down on the main floor uh, with bathrooms to support it, uh, leaving the second floor uh, not in the contract initially. Um, and then uh, eventually, uh, sooner than later, um, grow into that uh, second floor build out. 
Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, so in your opinion, uh, in your professional opinion, will the proposed church comply with all applicable standards of the Chicago zoning ordinance? Yes, it will. And is the proposed church compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site planning, building scale, project design, and operating? Uh, it, it will. Okay. And is the proposed church designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort? Yes, without question. Thank you. I don't have any further questions for Mr. Pasma. Okay. Any questions from the board for Mr. Pasma or else we'll, we'll go to Mr. O'Brien? Great. Let's go to Mr. O'Brien. Okay, Mr. O'Brien, can you please state your name, spelling your last name for the record? Uh, Terrence O'Brien, O apostrophe B R I E N, maintain offices in Lincolnwood, Illinois, at 7383 North Lincoln Avenue, professional real estate appraiser, licensed by the state of Illinois, have the designation M A I. Thank you. And Mr. O'Brien, um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. And we recognize your expertise um, based off of many appearances um, here with this board. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. O'Brien, are you familiar with the property that's the subject of the hearing today? I am. And what's the basis of your familiarity? Well, my familiarity is based upon my own personal inspection of the subject property and surrounding area. Also in recent time, I've done other work in the subject area for special uses and appraisals including one at the corner of 18th and State Street for a nursing home. And, and, and um, what other types of uses are present in the surrounding area? It's a mixed use, but it's becoming more and more residential in nature. Some of the first floors are utilized uh, in structures are utilized for retail purposes. However, the upper floors are definitely residential for the most part. The uh, size of the buildings are anywhere from single story to high rise. The rage varies anywhere from new to well in excess of 100 years old. There are some vacant lots in the surrounding area, some used lights for parking and storage of automobiles. Located immediately across the street from the subject is a residential development that's residential in nature. There's no ground floor uh, commercial or retail. Um, and are you familiar with the application for special use that's the subject of this hearing? I am. And have you become familiar with the manner in which applicant is proposing to use the subject site? Yes, I am. Okay, and so based on your familiarity with the subject site and applicants operating um, characteristics, do you have an opinion whether the request for the special use is in the interest of public convenience? In my opinion, it is, and as stated by the Reverend Campbell, there is definitely a need and he's Proof of that is the amount of people who attend his services and so forth. Uh, will the special will the special use have any sort of adverse impact on the welfare of the neighborhood? In no, in opinion? fact, I think it'll complement the area, especially considering the fact that there is a transition to more and more residential in the subject area, which uh, would allow residents to utilize the facility and so forth. And is the use compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site planning and building scale and project design? Yes, the, the building's only two story in height. And as I mentioned earlier, there's many buildings in the area whose height far exceeds that, their size far exceeds that. So I don't see any problem from the standpoint of scale or things of that nature. Um, and is the use compatible with the surrounding area in terms of operating characteristics such as hours of operation, lighting, noise, traffic? Yes, as described earlier, the primary use is on Sunday from roughly 8.30 to 1 p.m. However, there'll be other uh, functions that'll occur there, but really there's not of any great intensity. There's many other uses in the surrounding area which are used substantially more than this proposed use of the subject. Uh, and do you have an opinion, Mr. O'Brien, as to whether the use is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort? I can see no problem with regards to pedestrian safety and comfort. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any further questions of Mr. O'Brien. Thanks. Okay. Um, I've got one question and then the board maybe has some before we, um, we, uh, we, we go back over to Bonnie. Um, this one goes to the Reverend. It's just something we sometimes 
ask on um, these special uses for religious assemblies that especially ones that are located in denser areas, would you impede or um, protest uh, to neighboring commercial uses applying for liquor licenses? No. Okay. Okay, great. Any other questions from the board? Okay, so um, I want to go over now to Ms. Sanchez Carlson. And again, Ms. Sanchez Carlson, thank you very much for coming. And um, in this part of the process, you can really, like I said, you can ask questions, you can object, you say, you can say you don't object. It's really up to you. Um, I just would like to get you sworn in. So if you could state your name and address, please. Sure. My name is Bonnie Sanchez Carlson, and I am the president and executive director of the Near South planning board located at 2600 South Michigan Avenue. Um, and I thank you for this time uh, in front of- Let me just, before uh, you get too far, I'm gonna swear you in. So um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, go right ahead. So thank you for this opportunity. And I'm very familiar with that site for, for many years as Mr. Toya pointed out there. Uh, and the, the area itself is a little challenging. So uh, that rang some bells when I saw this on the agenda uh, as to number one, yes, parking. And, uh, you know, it's great that they have secured a lease for that vacant parcel north of the building, but what happens when that becomes developed, um, especially if you're building on the second floor, 250 assembly seats. And I understand that he's going to try to draw from the community as well. But these were some ideas that maybe if we had spoken to prior to, we could have just you know, got rid of all these concerns, alleviate those concerns. So uh, I, I just want to make sure that that there is not because this area pre pandemic was growing and changing. And, and, and I'm glad you asked the question about the liquor license, too, because businesses will start be moving back in. So I, I just want to make sure that we have a good neighbor that we can talk to and, and and address some concerns as they, they move in. I am not going to take a position right now on this at all. Okay, thank you. And um, do you have any questions before we uh, go back to, to the applicant just for uh, reaction and closing? Sure. Uh, I'd like to know how many spaces did they lease for that parking? And what is the contingency plan if that is redeveloped. Yeah, so we uh, lease really that vacant lot that is there on the southeast corner of 18th and State. So I don't know exactly how many spaces that'll take. What I would say to you is we don't need, frankly, that many spaces, is that most of our people do use public transportation. Um, so we were, um, and in terms of a contingency plan, it is an evergreen lease, so it would continue until there was some development. As you're probably aware, that is not one bit of property. There's actually a couple of different owners. So we do have some notice provision if they were going to terminate the lease. And uh, we would look for additional uh, parking opportunities. I mean, we've talked to uh, different, this was, the this was the one to work best for us because it was close to the building, but there are other locations uh, around the South Loop that we would seek if uh, that was no longer available to us. And we, I would say the other thing too, and first of all, I do want to apologize for not talking to you ahead of time. It, I just missed that and it's my fault and I apologize for that. We are committed to being a good neighbor. We want to be part of the fabric of the South Loop. Um, but, um, you know, we would be looking for, I mean, we're looking for now what is a permanent solution to the parking. So we'd love your thoughts on that as well. But I am confident we will not be disruptive to the neighborhood. I think we will be a, an addition, a blessing to the neighborhood. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, all I ask is just follow up with him, with our organization. I will. Perfect. Perfect. Um, okay, good. And if there's any issue getting in touch, if, if Ms. Sanchez Carlson, if you call our office um, or Kate, Kate Duncan's I, pretty easy to Google. Yeah. Like those lawyers. I, I assure you, we will make sure we get in touch with Ms. Sanchez Carlson right away. Okay, perfect. 
Thank you. Um, so with that, Ms. Carlson, um, Ms. Sanchez Carlson, do you have everything you need if I'm to turn back to the applicant now? Please, thank you. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna ask if the board has any questions before I just ask for a very brief closing from the applicant. So are there any questions from the board? No, I just wanna make a statement. Um, I'm glad that uh, Bonnie and the church is gonna to get together. Bonnie's a very pragmatic uh, person that really cares about the near South side. So I think this is great that, you know, we got the communication going. I always say communication is the key to success. So glad that's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. He does always say that. Um, okay. So uh, <laughs> counselor, um, if you want to just close out, I think we can wrap it up. Sure. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the, of the Zoning Board of Appeals for hearing our case this afternoon. Um, we just would ask, respectfully request your favorable consideration of this matter. And thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. We'll take this under consideration and enjoy your weekends. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, let's go now to calendar number 33-22-Z. Excuse me, excuse me, I lost my sound. I can't hear anything. Okay. Um, I lost uh, Kate's um, closing statement. Um, Kamal, is there anything that, it just went. Uh, so Donna, it's okay. You, you, I'll send you a link to the recording uh, tonight, so so you can pick up from the from the recording. Uh, but if you are still not able to hear me, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, you'll have to restart. Yeah, and we um, let's get her, come, come also. I'm not getting anything. Let me put a message for her, uh, Chairman, that she should restart or rejoin the meeting. Yep, that would be great because we've got it. Kate, if you're still on, we've got to just get your closing statement back. Um, we need it for the, the legal record. Okay. Hello. Hi. They're telling me to they're telling me to leave and rejoin the meeting. Your call has been forwarded. So, uh, uh, Chairman, I can bring back attorney uh, uh, yeah, that would be Duncan or, or Donna can also just uh, go with my recording. I do have it all recorded. Yeah. Uh, we we got, I'm just being told by the lawyers, we, we just need Kate to say those two sentences again, I, basically. Um, and then we can. I, I think she's already gone. Okay. She left the meeting. So, Attorney Kate Duncan is not here anymore. Okay, so we're, Tom, we're good. We're good in regard to Kate. Just gonna make that decision. Um, we just can't restart until a court reporter comes back. So Donna, you're back. Are you able to hear us now? Donna, are you able to um, hear? Can you speak? No, I'm not hearing anybody. Yeah, Donna, Donna, can you hear us? He's talking, but okay. It's streaming live. Um, okay, so what I think you're going to need to do is you're going to need to turn off everything.
Mr. Chairman, uh, Terry O'Brien speaking. Do you want me to try to get a hold of Kate Duncan to put her back on? No, Terry. So thank you so much. What we're going to do is just because we it's just a tiny bit and it there was no we were we were wrapped up is we're going to um, send Donna the recording just to make sure she has everything on that one. But I okay. appreciate I it. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Terry. The chairman, the court reporter has left. Maybe she's joining in from some other device or something. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Let's uh, let's wait it out, and she'll she'll get back on. Okay, Donna, are you able to hear us now? All right. Are you able to hear us now? This doesn't look good. Hi, can no. you hear us? No, okay. Okay. All right. Um, I can't still call you because I, I don't, you called the wrong person. Okay. Do you want uh, I, I think somebody needs to take. Okay, so, um, you know, this. let's take a short break just to let this sort out instead of everyone just waiting and watching. Um, so I'm going to call another 10 minutes. Thanks, everyone. I know we just had a break and we're almost there, but we will uh, get this sorted. So let's, let's take a break until 448 Central Time. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. <laughs> Oh, Commissioner Saul, I I, uh, I need to get you. Oh, no, I'm not hearing you either. Wow. Yeah, okay, I see the, this is not a, uh, this is one I think we can <laughs> do the thumbs up version. Uh, Commissioner Rao? Nothing. Commissioner Esposito? Yes, can you Great. hear me? Yes, yeah, Commissioner Toya? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, and that's, that's three, so. Um, I could hear you. Okay, perfect, there we go. <laughs> I just couldn't get uh, to my mute. All right, so let's let's come back at, at 4.50 and um, sending out good energy that everything gets sorted. Thanks, everyone.
something. Testing for Donna. So I'll let them know. Uh, Chairman, uh, uh, Donna is back and her audio is now good. Is not working, did you say? I'm good. No, it, it oh, great. Good. Okay, good. Um, great. Thank you for wrestling with that, Donna. And we'll. Um, oh, thanks for the help, Kamal and everybody. Thank no, Kamal, you. Yeah, this, Kamal's always the most helpful. So thanks, Kamal. And we'll, we'll okay. start again in a few minutes. Okay, thank you. Yep, thanks. And just for clarification, we'll start again at 4.50, just because that's when I called recess until, um, just so make sure everyone's back and ready. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Tech support, can I ask you a question while we're in recess? Uh, yes, sure, Mr. Watson. Oh, never mind. There he is. I was going Hello. to make sure that John <laughs> Hanna was promoted. <laughs> so we didn't have further delays. So never mind. Thank you. We're good. Okay, um, let me make sure that we have all of our commissioners back. Um, I'm just missing one. Commissioner, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. No, it was like I was starting to freak out. All right, Chair. Everyone. Thank you. <laughs> so we're all good. And here is, I'm promoting Commissioner Toya. All right, and that's everyone. So I move that we reconvene this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. We are back.
and um, we're going to dive right into calendar number 33-22-Z. Um, and if anyone is here to object for this matter, 33-22-Z, please just raise your hand and we'll get you promoted. Um, with that, Councillor Acosta, go right ahead. Good evening, everyone. Rolando Acosta here on behalf of the applicant. Here with me today is Mark Falanga, representing the applicant and our architect, John Hanna, uh, for this project. This, the matter before you involves an existing property on the south side of West Morse, approximately 145 feet from the Morse Avenue Red Line stop. It currently is improved with a four-story building containing ground floor commercial spaces and 14 residential units on the upper floors. The proposal is to uh, build an addition to the existing building that will be connected to the existing bu building by a common stairway between the two. Uh, that addition required the rezoning of the property. We went through a full community process with two full community meetings, additional common periods allowed by the alderwoman, uh, by the neighbors, and we also met with individual neighbors and have no objections to this proposal. The um, request is for a variation in the rear yard setback from 30 feet to 10 feet. The hardship is caused by the existing building, the fact that it has rear windows, which are required by code that face south. And if we were to attach the addition directly to the building, those windows would be blocked and those units would not no longer be called, be compliant with the Chicago building code. Similarly, the new addition will also have north facing windows uh, and so the separation between the two buildings creates the requisite light and air. That separation is approximately 16 and a half feet. We, uh, we do have a 10 foot rear yard setback. So effectively, if you would put those together, we'd almost be the, the 30 feet that are required. If we were not granted the variation, uh, the, the applicant who is the owner of the property would lose eight units. As a result, uh, his rate of return would go from an approximate 8% to negative. Uh, so obviously this hardship is what brings us before you uh, with respect to this building and the request. The building will have nine parking spaces. The reduction in parking, the resulting number of units will be 30. It, it will include two affordable units in the building. The, um, it will have nine parking spaces in total. That reduction in parking was already granted pursuant to the type one rezoning that the city council approved in May of 2021. That also has been submitted as part of our exhibits for this matter. Uh, I'd like to turn to my two witnesses. Uh, first, Mr. Mark Falanga. And if Mark, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Mark Falanga, 2436 West Bloomingdale Avenue, Chicago, 60647. Thanks, Mark. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do, Commissioner. Great. Uh, and, and Mark, you are the representative of the applicant? Yes. Its manager? Yes. Uh, and you heard my introductory statement, and is it accurate in all respects? Yes, it is. Good summary. Thank you. Uh, I prepared an affidavit on your behalf. You reviewed the affidavit and signed it. Is that correct? Yes. And if you were to testify today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements in that affidavit? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I have no particular questions, Mr. Chairman, of Mr. Falanga. Uh, I make them available to the board if the board has any questions. Great, thanks. Any questions from the board for Mr. Falanga? Okay, Councilor, none now, but we'll circle back after uh, Mr. Hanna. Sure. Uh, and now I'd like to turn to Mr. Hanna. John. Hello. State your name and address for the record. Uh, John Hanna, president of Hanna Architects, Inc., 180 West Washington, Chicago, Illinois, licensed architect in the state of Illinois. And John has been sworn in previously today. Thank you. Uh, so, John, you are the architect for this project? Correct. You also heard my introductory statement uh, with respect to this project, and was that accurate? It was. Uh, and I forgot to mention, so I figured I would ask you, uh, in, a, in, in addition to the addition, sorry about the repetitive words, 
uh, one benefit of this uh, proposal is that we'll, it will add an elevator to this building. Is that correct. correct? That's correct. So it will make the units in the existing building ADA accessible as well as the units in the addition. That's correct. Uh, and that's seen as a benefit because there are a few four-story multifamily buildings in this area that have elevator access. Correct. Uh, I prepared an affidavit on your behalf, which you reviewed and signed. Is that correct? Yes. And if you were to testify today, would your testimony be consistent with uh, the statements in that affidavit? I would. Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I would make all of us available for any questions the board may have. Thank you, Councillor. Um, any questions from the board for, for anyone who's spoken? Okay, Councillor, we have what we need on this one. Um, so we will, uh, we will circle back and take this under consideration. And I, I thank you and hope that you uh, get done soon without any technical difficulties and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. You too. Take care. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, um, we're gonna now move to calendar numbers 34-22-S and 35-22-Z. Um, as everyone gets situated, I'm gonna read the department's recommendation on the special use. And while I do so, I just wanna note if anyone is here to object on this matter, um, raise your hand and we'll get you promoted. Um, I also believe that we have Alderman Raboyas on for this matter, so, um, Alderman, you can actually let me know now. Do you want to speak at the beginning or the end? Do you have a preference? I'll speak at the end. Perfect. Great. Um, then we'll come back to you. So for calendar number 34-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish residential use below the second floor of the existing two-story mixed-use building. Uh -huh. to convert two commercial units to two dwelling units on the, on the ground floor for a total of eight dwelling units, provided that the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and drawings dated November 11th, 2021, with floor demolition plans and elevations dated September 12th, 2021, all prepared by House Architecture. And with that, Councillor, um, you can begin. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, early evening, Mr. Chairman and the honorable members of the board and a very warm welcome to Commissioner Rayo. Um, I am happy to be here this evening for the record. My name is Sarah Barnes and I'm an attorney with the Law Offices of Sam Banks. I'm here this evening on behalf of the applicant 3708 West Belmont LLC. Joining us remotely is the managing member of that applicant LLC, as well as the property manager, Sebastian Barsh. As well, we have our project architect, Randy Houts, and our esteemed MAI certified appraiser, Terry O'Brien. Um, Mr. Chairman, I believe Terry's already sworn in, um, but if you want to go ahead and swear in Mr. Barsh and Mr. Houts, we can kill two birds with one stone. Oops, sorry, I was muted. Um, perfect. And I echo that um, Terry O'Brien has been sworn in and we've recognized his expertise. Um, so that's on the record. And um, Mr. Sebastian Barsh, can you state your name and address? You're muted, Sebastian. There we go. Uh, Sebastian Barsh, 3352 West Grand Avenue. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's <clears throat> proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, Randy Houts, can you state your name and address as well? Sure, it's Randy Houts, 1645 North Maplewood Avenue, number 2F, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. All right, great. Thank you. Um, I was hoping that I would go super quick and do a really abbreviated um, presentation, which I'll still do, but I was hoping to do it so that you guys could all get out of here before it got dark, but we were delayed a little. So um, I'm still gonna go abbreviated. If I 
glance over anything, please feel free to answer or to ask any questions. Um, the subject property is located in the Avondale and South Old Irving Park neighborhood. Prior to even filing an application, we actually did reach out to Alderman Reboiris's office to advise him kind of the, of the circumstances of um, this proposal, surrounding this proposal. And um, I want to thank Alderman Reboiris for remaining here all day today and for his ongoing support throughout this process. He and his staff have just been wonderful with which to work. Um, as you'll see from the photograph above, the subject property is currently improved with an old um, eight unit mixed use building that's kind of in the shape of a U. Um, where it has two arms in the front on Belmont and then in the back it reconnects but down the middle there's a courtyard. Um, the building was originally constructed over 100 years ago back in 1906. <clears throat> Mr. Barsh um, recently, well, actually four years ago, acquired the property. Um, again, it had, at the time of acquisition, the building ha had six dwelling units and two commercial storefronts. The two commercial storefronts are on the first floor at the front of the building on Belmont, and then there's six dwelling units located between the first and second floor of the building. Um, at the time he acquired the property, Mr. Barsh did make some investments and did significant substantial upgrades and renovations to the existing dwelling units, as well as the commercial units in an effort to keep them occupied. Unfortunately, however, the two storefronts um, at the front of the building have remained vacant um, despite Mr. Barsh's prudent and very zealous efforts to find tenants. Um, and that's been for the last four years, believe it or not. Um, so in an effort to reactivate that streetscape, both for the safety of the community and the residents of the building, we are here today seeking to convert the exist two existing storefronts into dwelling units um, that would be maintained as rental units as well. Um, with that, we are seeking a special use, and that is to allow for the residential use on the first floor, even though there's already a residential use um, on the rear of the property on the first floor. And then two, because the building is not unified, we do require a single variation for a reduction in the MLA that will allow us to have that eighth unit. Um, there's already eight units in the building, but because we can't join the front two storefronts and make them into one combined dwelling unit, we do require the single variation. So with no further ado, I will get Mr. Barsh on the record, please. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Barsh, can you once more just state your name and address for the record? Yeah, sure. It's Sebastian Barsh, 3352 West Grand. Thank you. And by and through your LLC, you own the subject property, correct? That's correct. Um, and with that, you also manage the subject property and the dwelling units or all of the units located therein. Is that correct? That's correct. And you have many years of experience as a property manager um, in the city of Chicago. Is that true? That's true. I've been managing property for about 15 years now. And that's both commercial and residential. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you. And towards that end, um, as I just described, the two vac the, the two storefronts have remained vacant now for it's been almost four years. Is that right? That's about right, yeah. And you've actually um very actively marketed them, not just personally, but using a real a reputable real estate firm. Is that correct? That's correct. They've been um, actively represented by 5M real estate. Thank you. And still, despite those efforts, you just haven't been able to find a, a tenant. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, I have them uh, marketing it. I've marked, tried to pursue people myself as well. With I've had some a track record of success in doing that on previous uh, vacant retail vacancies that I've had. And it's really been a struggle at this particular location. Thank you. Um, but you've been able to keep the residential units occupied. There seems to be an interest there. Is that correct? That's correct. They rarely go vacant in the building. Perfect. Um, so with that, um, 
in consideration of this proposal, if approved here today, you intend to invest um, some more, even more resources into the build out of the interior of those storefronts to convert them over to dwelling units. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, we'll, we'll have resources allocated to the interior of those storefronts as well as to the facade of the building, which is in a little bit of disrepair and uh, to create the parking in the back as well. Thank you. Um, and yeah, towards that same end, right now there is no off street parking for the building. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, so no parking for the residents of the building, but in consideration once more of this proposal, um, the plan calls for you to actually establish five new surface park off street parking spaces at the rear of the property. Is that correct? That's correct. And we were hoping to get a sixth one on there on um, Mr. Chairman and other members of the board, but unfortunately there's a comment poll that we can't seem to circumvent. So we're going with five um, new parking spaces, although only two would be required. So um, it's a nice addition for the community. Um, with that, Mr. Barsh, I'm not gonna, I don't have any further questions. You did, however, you were given a copy of certain findings of fact, as well as an affidavit prior to this hearing. If you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements made in those documents and the exhibits there too? It would. Thank you. Um, Mr. Houts? Yes. Can you, may you state your name and address for the record once more? Uh, Randy Hout, 1645 North Maplewood Avenue, number 2F, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Thank you. And you're a licensed um, architect here in the state of Illinois, is that right? Yes, for about uh, 30 years. Thank you. And you designed the programming for the interior conversion of the two dwelling units within this building, is that right? I'm sorry, the two storefronts within the yes, existing correct. building. Correct. Thank you. Um, I'm going to keep your testimony a little brief in consideration of the time for the board, but um, in designing the programming for that conversion and working within the confines of the zoning ordinance, is it true that the real hardship here is the fact that not only are you dealing with the footprint and envelope of an existing 100 plus year old building, but that building, the way it's configured with the courtyard down the middle, further restricts your ability to, um, to make improvements to the existing storefronts? Correct, it allows basically one bedroom unit. Yes, correct. And two, you would not have a way to combine the um, two storefronts into a single dwelling unit due to that courtyard, is that right? Yes, there'd be no access to the back units, correct. Thank you. Um, so then, um, Mr. House, is it your professional opinion that the programming for the proposed build out of these storefronts um, does in fact meet all of the standards and criteria for a variation as is set forth in the current zoning ordinance? Correct. Thank you. Um, and to Mr. House, you were also provided with a copy of the findings of fact as well as an affidavit prior to the hearing. If you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements that were made in those documents? That would be correct, yes. Thank you so much. And I apologize, Mr. Chairman, did you have questions for my first two witnesses? No, we can take them all. Uh, At the you know, end. Yeah, yeah, you just wrapped it up, right? Um, um, I just have Mr. O'Brien for the special use. Okay, great, but so I, I guess that's a perfect buffer. Any questions from the board to this point? Okay, Counselor, you can keep going. Okay, thank you. Mr. O'Brien. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, once more for the record, your name, please. Uh, Terrence O'Brien, O apostrophe B R I E N, maintain offices at 7383 North Lincoln Avenue, Lincolnwood, Illinois, professional real estate appraiser, consultant, li licensed by the state of Illinois, and have the designation MAI. And you have already been recognized by this honorable board in that capacity. Towards that same end, you were retained by the applicant in order to evaluate whether or not the proposal to convert the existing storefronts into dwelling units meet all of the standards and criteria for special use as set forth under the current zoning ordinance. 
did you have an opportunity to go out and evaluate the subject property as well as the surrounding area? Yes, I uh, inspected the subject property and surrounding area on November 4th of 2021. I've also done other work in the area, so I am quite familiar with the subject area as far as land uses and so forth. Thank you. And for the sake and interest of the time for, of the board, um, all of your evaluations and the opinions you derived therefrom are provided in a report that you, a written report that you prepared. Is that true? That is correct. And that report has been tendered to the board prior to this hearing and is a part of the record. Is that also correct? Correct. In that report, Mr. O'Brien, and in your findings, did you make a determination that the proposed special use does in fact meet all of the standards and criteria for a special use as set forth under the current zoning ordinance? Yes, I addressed those criteria, the five of them, and I also addressed the criteria for variations. I just Thanks. like to point, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, please go. Uh, I just wanted to point out in the two block along the 36 and 3700 block of uh, Belmont that I'm aware of at least 11 other residential uses on the ground floor and consisting of 12 units. I'm also aware in that same two block stretch of 12 uh, vacancies for retail stores. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Brien. And towards that end, if you were to continue to testify here today, um, would the testimony that you provide be consistent with the statements that are also provided in your report? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, that's all for me, for my witnesses, Mr. Chairman. We're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And, you know, I, we're going to um, definitely uh, give the alderman an opportunity to speak. I just want to first see if there's any questions um, from the board before that occurs. Any questions from the board? Okay, Alderman uh, Raboyas, can you just uh, state your name and let us know who you are and I'll swear you in. Ariel Raboyas, uh, Alderman of the 30th Ward. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Okay, go right ahead. Thank you, Chairman Knudsen and uh, members of the ZBA committee. Uh, as stated by Councillor Barnes, this matter is requesting to require variation to convert uh, a six dwelling unit building into an eight unit dwelling building by converting the two commercial spaces on the, on the ground. I therefore ask for a favorable decision of the matter before you by the board. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for uh, spending the time to come today. I know you were here right at the beginning and here we are at the tail end. So we appreciate it. We like having you. Um, thank you. Any questions, any questions overall from the board before we close this out. All right, everyone, thank you so much. And we'll take this under consideration. Thank you very much. Yep, enjoy your weekend. Thanks, you too. Okay, we're, yes. gonna, we're gonna stick with Councilor Barnes and we're gonna move um, into continuances. Um, so this is calendar number 367-21-S which I believe we may have um, an objector on. So if you're here to object for this matter, 367-21-S, just raise your hand and um, we will promote you to panelist. I just promoted a uh, Patricia Conroy. Anyone else just raise your hand and we'll make sure you have the opportunity to speak. Okay, I'm promoting someone with the title owner Okay, great. Um, so since there are objectors, yeah, yeah, we can. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you though. I'm gonna explain how we do the process when there's objectors. Okay, so we've got objectors on this matter. Um, how we run this is we'll give the applicant the opportunity to give their case in chief. Um, and the board will have the chance to ask questions regarding the substance of the case in chief. Then we'll move over to the objectors. And um, we always ask that there's one person who leads it off. Um, we always stress that as this isn't a, a uh, 
fully open community meeting, we like to get all objections concisely and not repetitively. So if someone's already stated a substantive objection, please don't repeat it. Just say you agree and um, we'll get that on the record. You're also able to ask questions of the applicant of that time. at that time. Um, after that, we'll move back to the applicant who will be able to give rebuttal testimony and close out. Throughout this whole process, the board will be able to ask questions, clarifying um, what we know from our report and what we hear um, from this. Um, so with that, before I read the department's recommendation, I wanna ask um, the alderman again, at what point he would like to speak in this process. Towards the end. Great, perfect. Um, we will not forget about you. So I am gonna read the department's recommendation as everyone gets settled. For 367-21-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends denial of the proposal to establish a drive-through facility at the subject site. The proposed project is exclusively auto-oriented and is, sorry, entirely incompatible with the character of Addison Street, which is predominantly comprised of single family houses, two flats, and low density multi-unit residential buildings with intermittent small-scale retail or service uses. Furthermore, the proposed plan is designed to accommodate vehicles rather than pedestrians. Based on the foregoing, it is the department's opinion that the proposal to establish a drive-through restaurant at the subject site is not compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site plan and project design, does not promote pedestrian safety and comfort, is not in the interest of the public convenience, and will have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of this predominantly residential neighborhood. Okay. With that, counselor, um, I will let you take it away. And I just do want to make sure we have Nancy Radzovich on with the Department of Planning and Development. And it looks like we do. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, th thank you, Nancy. We'll, we'll circle back because of the department's recommendation. Counselor Barnes, you can go right ahead. Once again, for the record, my name is Sarah Barnes, and I'm an attorney with the Law Offices of Sam Banks, located at 221 North LaSalle Street. I'm happy to be here this evening on behalf of the applicant, Starbucks Corporation. Joining us remotely is Tom Hanrahan, the store development manager for Starbucks, along with our MAI certified appraiser, Terry O'Brien. Also available to provide testimony and or to answer vehicular circulation related questions is Michael Worthman, one of our traffic consultants and engineers. As to as another available witness, we have Adam Sesher on behalf of Starbucks who can answer operational questions related to other similar Starbucks locations that were approved prior to Mr. Han Hanrahan's tenure with the company. Um, Mr. Chairman, once again, if you'd like to go ahead and swear in all of my witnesses at the beginning, maybe we can expedite this a little bit. And I know Mr. O'Brien has already been sworn in. Okay. Um, yep. Let's do it. And then, uh, then we've got them sworn in. Um, Tom Hanrahan, will you state your name and address? Yep. Tom Hanrahan, uh, 1338 Holbrook Lane, Batavia, Illinois, 60510. Thank you, and you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yep. Great, thank you. Um, Mitch Goltz, will you state your name and address? Goltz isn't joining us today, or this evening, Mr. I lost Chairman. my sound again. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone just pause. Um, Hopefully this, we, we know hopefully how to get back fast since this happened before. Um, Donna, I'm assuming you can't hear me. So I, well, it's going without me. 
My sound went out again. Please start and read. And Kamo, hope, hopefully whatever solution worked last time works again. Donna, can you hear us now? Yeah, yes, yes, Chairman, she, she's good. Yes. Wait, now his mouth is moving. Yeah, sorry, I was I was muted. There's feedback. Um, Donna, can you try to speak again? Yes, I'm here. Can okay. You hear me? Yeah, great. Yeah. All right. Thanks yourself. again. Obviously, I have a problem that needs to be resolved, but hopefully okay. we can get done. I, okay. Yeah, it just means we need to move quickly. Yeah. Um, that's fine Thank okay you. uh so counselor Thank go right ahead if remind me we had just um determined that mitch goltz would not be on um i'm i'm going to then say we've sworn in terry o'brien and we've also um acknowledged his expertise based off of many appearances for us before so mike workman could you state your name and address yeah uh good evening uh, Michael Worthman, uh, principal with Kenneth Lingren, O'Hara Buna, KLOA, offices at 9575 West Higgins Road, Rosemont, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So Adam Sesher, will you state your name and address? Adam, you're on mute. Counselor, what's Adam's role? Oh, you're you're on mute. You're on mute, Sarah. Sorry, when they relogged in. Um, yeah. So actually, I um, Mr. Sesher is here. Just maybe. Um, I don't intend to ask him any questions on direct. So if it comes time for him to provide any type of testimony, we could swear him in at that time because he may not even end up testifying. 
but okay. Mr. Hanrahan for sure. Um, and then we have Mr. Worthman and Mr. O'Brien. So that should be it if we can just get Mr. Hanrahan. Okay, perfect. And I do want to go back and just acknowledge Mr. Worthman's expertise again, um, based on his report and TV. So um, good. Okay, Councilman, you can go right ahead. Oh, did did Mr. Hanrahan get sworn in? Yes. Oh, okay. I missed yeah, we, that. We, we, I'm yeah, sorry. First. No, no worries. We're all perfect. kind of all over the place. Ah. We're back. All right. Um, with no further ado, then um, we are here before you this evening seeking a special use, which, if granted, will allow Starbucks to operate a single lane drive through facility at the subject um, site. In their quest to keep up with the evolving consumer preferences and behaviors in order to provide the best customer service. Um, this particular Starbucks is intended to specifically service on-the-go patrons. So that the design for this specific location follows one of Starbucks' more recent and most successful models, which is limited to drive-through and pickup service only. We will get into those details further in a moment with Mr. Hanrahan. Um, before I do proceed to my witnesses as a little bit of relevant background, the subject property um, is located at the south and comprises the southeast corner of Addison Street and Long Avenue. The property is presently imp improved, as you can see from the photograph, with an old one-story frame building and a surface parking lot. The property and existing improvements are presently vacant and unoccupied, a state that has plagued the property for over five years. Based on our research, and I'm sure that Alderman Raboyris can corroborate, the site was most recently occupied by an automo rep automobile repair and service station, um, which again abandoned the property a little over five years ago. Prior to there too, the site operated as a gas station and even before that, a carry out hot dog stand. Accordingly, the site as presently configured is serviced by two very large driveways or curb cuts on Addison Street, um, if you can go back to one of the photos, and another two way driveway off of Long Street. This is the driveway off of Long Avenue. Common to most city properties, there's a public alley that traverses the property to the south, off of which, as you can see from this photograph, is another driveway. <laughs> the photographs submitted with this application are demonstrative of all of these <coughs> existing conditions. The intent, should this honorable board grant the petition special use, is to raise the existing structures and to reactivate the site with a new one-story building that will be serviced by a single lane accessory drive-through, once more operated and managed by the applicant, applicant Starbucks. In addition to the drive-through, which will exclusively service customers commuting by vehicle, the programming for the new, new facility also calls for a secondary pickup window, which is intended to service pedestrian customers as well as avid bicyclists in the neighborhood. This pickup window may also be used by customers who, who prefer to exit their vehicle and grab their mobile order to go without utilizing the drive through um, In a further effort to improve the site, not just for its own customers, but for the many residents and commuters living and working in this part of the neighborhood, the programming calls for the provision of a newly paved parking lot accommodating at least 10 vehicles as well as secured bicycle parking. And two, new landscape elements will adorn the boundary of the site, in particular along the sidewalks and public ways, leaving room for a beautiful new outdoor patio for enjoyment by patrons during the warmer months when the everyday hustle and bustle slows down a little bit. In further consideration of this proposal, and as a benefit to the community, while to promoting public safety, the applicant will be reusing the existing two-way curb cut along Long Avenue as the primary vehicular entrance to the site. In turn, the applicant will be restoring and eliminating the westernmost curb cut on Addison Street, restricting vehicular movements to egress only on Addison Street 
out of the drive through and that egress will be a right turn only. There will not be two, um, you will not be able to make a left turn onto Addison Street and there will be no entrance off of Addison Street. And um, all of this is again using an existing two-way curb cut, half of which the applicant will restore, allowing once more for only outbound egress back onto Addison. With an emphasis on serving the community, the applicant and their development team, including myself, reached out to Alderman Raboyres from the onset regarding their desire to become a vested and <coughs> contributing member of this community. From there, members of the applicant's team hit the streets, talking to residents and business owners in the immediate area about their proposal, including ongoing communications with the immediately adjacent homeowners who are most intimately affected by any reactivation of this site. And two, the applicant's team continued to work with Alderman Raboyres and his incredible staff at the 30th Ward office to further engage with the community even hosting a virtual town hall meeting in December of 2021 to garner more feedback toward fine tuning the programming to meet the needs and address any concerns of the members of this vibrant community. The revised plans that, have, that you have before you here today, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, reflect the modifications to the programming based on the meaningful feedback and measure, measures taken by Starbucks to truly make this a collaborative effort. Um, it should be noted therefore, Mr. Chairman, that the revised plan package prepared by Design, um, excuse me, Design Studio 24 LLC with revisions that are dated December 21st, 2021 should be the plans upon you, upon which you make any, your respective determinations today, excuse me. A copy of these plans were tendered to your staff, as well as to the Department of Planning and to, to the 30th Ward Office and the Portage Park Neighborhood Association prior to this hearing. As a result of this community engagement and related efforts, we are happy to advise that we have the full support of the family that resides in the immediately adjacent home who are excited to see this otherwise dormant site finally activated with a use that really serves the community. In addition to the Flores family, we have received written support from 11 other nearby residents and community members, as well as from Alderman Raboyres, who as we know is actually still here with us today to bring a voice to his sentiments. Um, Mr. Chairman, once more, a copy of these letters and emails, as well as a petition of support were tendered to the ZBA prior to the hearing as part of applicant supplemental exhibit D. Thank you, Councilor, really quick, can you remind us what the, um, the date of the plans are? Um, okay, so it's a little bit confusing. Sure. Um, the site plan in particular has a, it has a couple dates on it. Last of those dates will say revised and then a, a colon December 21st, 2021. So 12 21 21. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, with that introduction, um, I will continue to my witnesses unless there's any preliminary questions from the board. I think you can go to witnesses and then maybe the board will have questions of them. Sounds great. Thank you. Mr. Hanrahan, we would like to start with you, please. Can you once more go back on the record and just state your name and address? Yeah, <clears throat> Tom Hanrahan, uh, 1338 Holbrook Lane, Batavia, Illinois, 60510. Thank you. And you are the store development manager for Starbucks, is that right? That is true. Yep. And that's, that's a role that you've held for about five years with Starbucks? Yes. So you've been in different capacities within the Starbucks company, in particular, the real estate division for just about seven years. Is that right? Uh, real estate within Starbucks for five years. I've been in the real estate industry for seven. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
And towards these same ends, Mr. Hanrahan, um, you've testified before this board on behalf of Starbucks for similar other drive throughs is that correct? I have, yes. Um, as already described, the proposal calls for the construction of a one-story masonry building that will be oriented towards the east end of the site with its frontage directly abutting Addison. Is that right, Mr. Hammerham? Yep. Um, and then that, therefore, the proposed drive-through component of these operations is going to wrap around the rear of the um, subject building and the east side of the building. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and the veh vehicular entrance once more for the site is going to be the exclusive entrance to the site is going to be off of a an existing curb cut off of Long Avenue. Is that right? That is correct. Thank you. And that so cars will not be able to enter the um, premises off of Addison. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And regarding the programming for the drive through component once more in particular, um, the menu board will be intentionally situated towards the southwest corner of the site um, along the alley so that it's not abutting any of the adjacent properties. Is that true? That is true, yep. And two, it's away from the public ways. Is that correct? Yep. And once more, that's a model um, that Starbucks has been working on for several years uh, to avoid any interference with adjacent property owners. Is that right? Yes. Um, and I know there's other reasons for the location of the menu board, if you wanted to expound on that at all. Yeah, so the location at the seventh car is the most efficient location on our end to get uh, people through the drive through lane um, as quick as possible. And that efficiency prevents any interference or backup, um, not only within the site, but also along the public ways. Is that true? That is, yes, that is the attempt, yep. And that, again, is a model that Starbucks has been spending many, many years tweaking and um, collecting gathering data, is that correct? Yeah. Um, towards that same end, um, Mr. Hanran, uh, mobile pickup orders have become kind of the norm in the industry. Is that true? Yeah. Um, our customers at this point in time, um, on the go customers, which includes uh, drive through, mobile order, and pickup, and people just going into our cafe or going to a pickup window and, and leaving accounts for at least 80% of our transactions, correct? And that was a trend that you were noticing even before COVID, is that correct? That is correct, yes. In fact, even as long back, um, and I know this is a little bit before your tenure, but um, as far back as 2013, you were starting to convert over to these carry on the go, excuse me, stores, the pickup only, drive-through only type of stores, is that right? Um, we, we've had drive-through onlys um, as a store type for for quite a while. Uh, I think our first one within the Chicago land market was in the early two thousands. And you have been quite successful and efficient. Is that true? Yes. And are you aware of any negative incidences created by um, these types of drive-through only, pickup only, on the go stores? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Thank you. Um, focusing once again back to the drive through operations for this particular store, um, the design, as you kind of indicated with regard to the menu board, it calls for internal stacking or queuing of at least seven vehicles between the window where you receive your order and the menu board. Is that correct? Yeah. And um, that allows for at least one more car to stack in front of the pickup window going out onto Addison and three additional cars to stack behind the menu board without having any internal interference with the drive aisles or the driveways. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Um, so in actuality, there's stacking for at least 11 cars wholly on the interior of this site. Is that correct? 
Correct. And that's exclusive of the 10 off street parking spaces that you will also be providing. Is that also true? Yes, that's yep. Thank you. Um, as I described in the introduction, in addition to the drive through facility, this store will also feature a secondary pedestrian pickup window. Is that correct? Yes. And again, that's for that's intended to be utilized by pedestrians, bicyclists, um, neighbors, residents, and even vehicles um, who are coming to get mobile pickup orders typically is who uses that. Is that correct? Yep. And two, though, if a pedestrian um, were to arrive at the new store, they could place an order at that pickup window and have their order um, prepared on site. Is that true? That is correct. Yep. Thank you. Um, Um, and can, is it also true, Mr. Hanrahan, that in consideration of some of the feedback that we received during the community engagement for this project, um, you actually modified the program programming for the proposed new improvements to include the installation of outdoor heaters at and around the pedestrian pickup window um, for the colder months? Yeah, so that's correct. Yep. And two, uh, unique to this location, but as a result of that community engagement, um, you are also introducing a fully landscaped outdoor patio for this new store. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's located just off of the um, pickup window towards the front of the property off of Addison Street. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And to that outdoor patio, we'll also have um, heaters year round. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, operations. For this particular location, you intend to hire and maintain a staff of between six to eight full time employees. Is that right? Uh, we will have one store manager, and then we'll be hiring about uh, 22 part time employees. Um, and all of those employees will be um, trained and managed by Starbucks, correct? Correct. Great. Um, and then uh, your hours of operation servicing customers um, would be daily between the hours of 5 o'clock a.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. And that's with your peak hours of operation typically occurring between 7 o'clock a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m. on the weekdays and an hour later, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. on the weekends. Is that right? Yeah. And with these types of um, on-the-go operations, you don't really generally see peak hours in the afternoon or evening, do you? No, not, nothing compared to the, the a.m. peak. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hanran, is it true that the quality customer service is a primary priority of Starbucks um, in locating a viable site and then also creating the programming for a new facility? Yes. So then as a store developer for Starbucks, you take the data that's generated and maintained by the company in order to evaluate the consumer behaviors and needs of each specific community and choose the programming that best suits a specific site and community that you'll be serving. Is that correct? Correct. Um, great. And you applied that same method to this site. Is that right? Yep. Yep. yep, yep. You actually have um, a couple of other Starbucks, larger Starbucks locations um, within the broader area um that have indoor service is that correct you do yep um and the purpose of opening an additional store would be to service the residents within this immediate area which as defined by the department of planning and development actually earlier in this hearing is about a two to three block radius is that correct yes and that shifts some of the burden off of your other Starbucks locations um, in an effort to, again, just improve customer service 
while also being considerate and promoting um, public safety and welfare. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Um, with that, Mr. Hanrahan, I just have one last question, so to speak. Um, prior to the hearing, you were provided with a copy of findings of fact and an affidavit. If you were to continue to testify here today, would your testimony be consistent with the statements made in those documents? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, I will defer to you if you would like me to continue with my experts, or if you would like to go ahead and open it up to questions for. I would just say any any um, any questions from the board at this time. Hi, this is Jolene Saul. I have a quick one. Um, what do you expect during um, your peak hours? The the maximum car queue to be. Um, we would expect. I mean, it would be two eleven cars. I would say, um, roughly. Uh, once you get up to the drive-through window, um, our average uh, time from when you get to the window and you leave is about 45 seconds. Um, so one thing we don't really know is like when people are going to be coming and people all come at once or they come a little staggered. Uh, but we feel the stack of 11 cars is, uh, is, uh, is good here. Thanks. Yeah. Any other, any other questions from the board for Mr. Hanrahan? Okay, Councilor, go ahead. I will continue to, um, let's go with Mr. O'Brien. Terry, are you there? Attorney Barnes, your sound was gone. You'll have to repeat. My sound still okay? Now it's okay, but it earlier it went away. Oh, my apologies. Um, Mr. O'Brien, may yes, you please <laughs> may you please once more um state your name and address for uh, the Terrence M. O'Brien, O apostrophe B R I E N. Maintain offices at 7383 North Lincoln Avenue, Lincolnwood, Illinois. Professional real estate appraiser licensed by the state of Illinois and also had the designation MAI. Yeah. Um, and Mr. O'Brien, your expertise has already been recognized by this board. The scope of your assignment um, in this case was to determine whether the requested special use for the proposed single lane drive-through would comply with the general criteria for a special use as set forth under the current zoning ordinance. Is that right? That is correct. And did you have an opportunity to physically inspect the subject property as well as the surrounding area? Yes, I have. In November of this year, or excuse me, 2020, 2021, I inspected the subject surrounding area. Also, I've done other work in the subject area, so I am quite familiar with it. Um, okay, along those lines, uh, would you be able to just briefly describe the existing conditions of the subject site, as well as perhaps a little idea of the um, improvements within, I don't know, the immediate area, which again, I think DPD has already um, recognized as a two to three block. Correct. Um, down Addison. All right, uh, the subject property itself is located at the southeast corner of Long and Addison, has approximately 94 feet fronting on the south side of Addison and, and approximately 128 fraction feet fronting along the east side of Long. Total area is about 11,812 square feet. Currently, the property is partially improved with an older structure, single story, 1,100 plus or minus square feet. At one time, it was utilized for an automobile service station, and also for repairs of cars and so on and so forth. Currently, at the time of my inspection in the area that I've traveled and other jobs, I, I think it's been closed for some time. As far as the subject area, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just getting over the Omnicron rule, however you pronounce it, so I'm a little congested. Um, if I could just take a drink of water for a minute. As far as the subject area, 
I noticed the, in the Department of Planning in their objection, I think it was read at the beginning, they talked about the fact that the subject area is primarily residential in nature. I would like to point out to the board that in the two block radius from a, uh, along the stretch along Addison, from roughly Linder to Lockwood, that two block area, I would say at least 45% of the properties fronting on Addison are zoned for business or commercial uses. Also with regards to uh, the land uses in the subject area, I would point out that located on Lockwood in the southwest corner, southeast corner, is an auto repair shop located immediately east of that is a residential structure and then there's more additional residential structures. There's two other uses in the immediate area of the subject that in my opinion are also substantially more intense than that proposed by the applicant. And they are located at the northwest corner of Addison and Lockwood. And there's a BP Amico service station. It's open 24 hours a day. Immediately to the west, the single family residences. I'd also point to the property located at the southeast corner of Addison and Laramie. It's a Shell gas station, also open 24 hours a day, immediately to the west, residential uses. Going back to that auto repair shop at the corner of Addison and Lockwood, I don't know if I mentioned it, but immediately east of that, the single family residence. Also, there's other commercial and land uses in the subject area located immediately across the street from the subject is a commercial property that's utilized for, a, I believe, a chiropractic uh, facility. Also further east or west, I should say, along Addison, there's several other uses, including uh, taco restaurants and some other land uses in the subject area. Is also, I would want to point out, if I can, located in the vicinity of Cicero and Addison, there's two drive-through facilities, one at the, at the corner of Addison and uh, Cicero, and it's a McDonald's. And I point out, and that's only several blocks to the east subject. Immediately to the west of there is a residential structure and several more. Also, just to the south of McDonald's, on the corner of, um, I'm just going to my notes, if I may, Cicero and Edie, is a Kentucky Fried Chicken facility with a drive through facility. In fact, I testified on behalf of that for the special use. But again, immediately to the west of that are residential uses. So my point that I'm trying to make in describing the subject area, it's a mixed use type of area. Addison Street is mixed use. It's not residential completely. And I just want to point those things out. Thank you so much. Um... Right. And towards these ends, I should have maybe stated this first. Um, Ms. Velazquez, if you are able um, to pull up some of the additional exhibits that were submitted, um, it would be exhibit number six that was attached to applicant's supplemental exhibit D. There's some additional photographs that show um, what Mr. O'Brien just described. Um, and Mr. Chairman and other commissioners, you should have a copy of those photographs. Again, they're identified as number six in the index. Um, those should be a part of your record as well for reference. Um, towards that end, Mr. O'Brien, if we're able to get the photographs up, that would be great. But if not, um, it sounds like you actually went, you physically went out to the subject site and you made these observations yourself. Is that correct? Well, that's correct. I went out there specifically in July and then I revisited the, again in November. And again, as I stated, I've done other work in the subject area, so I am familiar with it. And um, as well, so then it sounds to me, and I, I believe this is, um the opinion that you set forth. Thank you, Ms. Velazquez. In your um, report, is it your professional opinion that the proposed use as a single lane drive through by Starbucks is compatible with the other existing improvements in the area? Yes, I believe it is definitely compatible. In fact, I believe its use is far less intense than some of the other uses I pointed out. And I do think it's in keeping with the character of the surrounding area. Thank you. And along 
those same lines as um, was already described. The existing property um, and what you can see in um, on the photograph above Mr. Chairman and Commissioners for reference is the auto shop that Mr. O'Brien had referenced that's located on the southeast corner, um, almost identical to our site, just one block to the east of our site on the same side of the street. Um, and that's the auto repair facility. They do that auto repair facility also does painting and um, full auto repairs. So it's a pretty intense use. And as you can see is located right next to that single family home. Um, that being said, Mr. O'Brien, other uses that have serviced the subject property included a similar auto shop as well as a gas station and a, a similar, a carry out drive-through stand, or sorry, drive-through or pick up hot dog stand, excuse me. The auto shop and gas station, in your opinion, are those both also higher intensity vehicular uses? Certainly the auto repair shop would be, as far as a restaurant, I think you said that hot dog stand. Yeah, that, that I was one? excluding. That, that but... wouldn't be any more, I don't believe, any more intense. But it would be similar. Yeah, because it's a restaurant. And I would point out, by the way, to the board, that restaurants are allowed here. And, and I'm, it's, so it's just really a question of the drive-through component of the applicant's uh, development that we're talking about here. Thank you. Um, and then again, in the photographs, you have the BP gas station that's located on the southwest corner of Laramie and Addison Street, which is two blocks. East and that would be the northwest corner. Oh, so excuse me. You're right. Northwest corner. That's two blocks um, east of the subject site and just across the street from that. And as you can see, that one's next to a single family home. Um, I would point out, too, that that's not an alley between the gas station structure and the house. That is the driveway for the gas station. So there's not you. any alley between the two. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Brien. Um, with that, in reviewing also as well the, the the programming for our for the subject property and improvements for the drive-through facility and the pickup um, facility, is it your professional opinion that with the modifications that were made to the programming that these operations at the subject property will not adversely impact the general welfare of the public or otherwise compromise pedestrian safety? No, I believe it's in keeping with the character of the area. It complements other development in the subject area. And actually it's a benefit in the sense that it's a removal of an existing eyesight. Thank you. And as well, um, we saw this when reaching out to the community. Is it your opinion that Starbucks will be serving the public and it, this, uh, these operations are in the general interest of public convenience as they will be providing a service that's not otherwise immediately available within walking distance? That's correct. Thank you. Um, so then in short and in summary, um, as set forth in your report further, Mr. O'Brien, is it your professional opinion that the proposed single lane drive-through facility as designed and operated by Starbucks meets all of the standards and criteria for a special use as set forth in the current zoning ordinance? Yes, I believe it does. Thank you. And if you continue to testify here today, with your testimony be consistent with the statements and opinions that are set forth in your report? Yes, I just one thing I was looking at the map on the uh, on the screen here with the red marker, that's not for the subject. I don't know what yeah, the red oh, the marker. green the green marker is. It's a little bit okay. More I just wanted to make to sure see. the red marker is actually the, the auto, auto repair. Shop. Yep. And our our subject property is one block to the west. Right. Um, and then just for the record, Mr. Chairman, obviously Mr. Um, O'Brien's report has been tendered to the board prior to these proceedings. So um, I have no further questions for Mr. O'Brien at this time, but I'm sure he'd be happy to entertain any that the board may have. 
Any questions from the board for uh, Mr. O'Brien? Okay, sounds like none. Okay, great. Um, then I'm just gonna continue with my one more expert and then we can hear from the other um, witnesses who have been so patiently waiting. Mr. Worthman? I'm here. Hi, great. Um, and you once more have already been um, recognized as an expert in the field of traffic and configuration, site configuration analysis. Um, towards that end, your um, your assignment um, regarding this proposal was to provide a professional opinion and some design direction as to the safest operation for the proposed drive-through facility at the subject property, is that correct? Uh, correct, we performed the traffic study for the proposed development. And um, again, just for the record, if you wouldn't mind, I know we submitted a copy of that report to the board prior to the proceedings, but if you can just summarize um, your findings and opinions. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for having me today. Um, as you've heard, the development's located in the southeast corner of Addison Street and Long Avenue. Um, Starbucks is approximately uh, 1,115 square feet. Um, it will have no indoor seating, uh, 10 parking spaces, as you can see from this site plan, and a drive-through facility. Um, Addison Street is classified as a collector street, has one lane in each direction um, with parking permitted on both sides of the street. Uh, there are peak hour restrictions um, to provide additional capacity during those peak periods on Addison Street. Um, in addition, separate left turn lanes are provided on Addison at its signalized intersection with Long Avenue. Uh, Long Avenue is a local street. It has one lane in each direction uh, with parking generally permitted on both sides of the street. As I indicated uh, previously, Long and Addison is controlled uh, by uh, traffic signal. So it's a, a higher capacity intersection given the traffic signals in the left turn lanes on Addison Street. Um, as it pertains to trip generation, uh, the volume of traffic generated by the store will be reduced for several reasons. Uh, the first reason is just the size of the store at just over a thousand square feet, uh, much smaller than you would find with your typical Starbucks. It also doesn't so have, there. yeah. I'm so sorry, um, just because it broke up on my end. Okay. Could you repeat, and I just want to be clear, I know for the court reporter, you said that the conditions that you're about to describe should mitigate Traffic? Yes, that, it should. Okay. Uh, it will reduce the volume of traffic Thank generated you. by just, the store. Thank you. I just wanted to be clear. Thank you. So uh, one was the size of the store, as we indicated, just over a thousand square feet. It also doesn't have any indoor seating as such. It generates less traffic than you would find from your typical Starbucks or typical uh, coffee store donuts to shop. Uh, in addition, as you've heard, uh, Mr. O'Brien and other experts, this is an infill store. Um, it's, um, there's approximately five Starbucks within a three mile radius of this site. Uh, there's also uh, six coffee stores, or fast food restaurants within a mile. So you can see that this is more of a neighborhood type store, uh, an infill store. Uh, more importantly, um, Coffee shops like Starbucks generates the majority of its traffic from that traffic already on the roadway system that's passing the site. Uh, it's referred to as pass by traffic, um, particularly during the morning and evening peak hour. Uh, bypass traffic can account for anywhere from 75 to 85 percent of the traffic uh, generated by a coffee store, um, coffee shop. Uh, as such, the uh, volume of new traffic uh, is significantly uh, reduce um, uh, new traffic to the area. Uh, one unique characteristic about this site is that it is in the southeast corner. And from a bypass perspective, it's in a great uh, location as it will capture all of that eastbound traffic that's going to the freeway system or going downtown. That traffic will just make a right turn into the site, 
on DeLong into the site and then make a right turn out and continue along Addison Street. Um, access to the site, as you've heard, will be provided via one full access drive on Long Avenue. Um, this will replace the existing drive that's already on Long Avenue. Uh, it will provide one inbound lane and one outbound lane with the outbound lane under stop sign control. Uh, it will be the only entrance into the development. Um, outbound access will be provided um, well, excuse me, the second access drive will be provided on Addison Street. Uh, that will provide outbound access from the drive through facility. Um, as Sarah said, this will be an outbound right turn only access drive onto Addison Street. All inbound movements will be prohibited as well as the outbound left turn will be prohibited. Once again, only right turn movements out. Uh, this access drive will be under stop sign control. Um, one of the unique features of uh, this plan is the fact that uh, the current site has two full access drives on Addison Street. Those access drives will be eliminated and replaced with just the outbound only access drive. Uh, this is significant in that it will greatly improve the flow of both vehicle traffic as well as pedestrian traffic along Addison Street and along Long Avenue too. Uh, we're eliminating the number of curb cuts and the one curb cut we're providing, it only has one turning movement as opposed to a typical four movements that you have at an access drive with the two inbound and the two outbound movements. So uh, we feel this access system has been designed uh, to provide efficient and orderly access and will have a limited impact on the existing flow of traffic uh, particularly pedestrian traffic along both Addison and Long Avenue. Um, one other point as it pertains to the pedestrian traffic, um, Long Avenue and uh, Addison Street is under traffic control. It does have crosswalks and all of them and pedestrian signals on all four approaches. Uh, lastly, uh, 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 the evaluation shows that the street system and the intersection of Addison Street and Long Avenue has more than sufficient capacity to accommodate the additional traffic that will be generated by the Starbuck. Uh, no street improvements or traffic signal modifications are required. Um, just lastly, as it pertains to the drive through facility, as you've heard, uh, we'll have stacking for seven vehicles between the drive through window and the drive through order board. In addition, another four vehicles can be accommodated uh, between the order board and Long Avenue for a total of 11 vehicles stacked on site. To be noted that a, the accommodation of 11 vehicles is similar, if not greater than most coffee shops that you find in the city of Chicago. Um, the seven with the additional four um, I don't know many locations that provide more stacking than what we're showing on this plan. Um, in addition, um, the amount of drive-through stacking uh, will be reduced or minimized once again for several reasons. Uh, one is the right turnout only. That's much more efficient. Uh, it's much easier to make a right turnout than a left. Uh, so that should help reduce the amount of stacking. Uh, once again, there's no indoor seating uh, provides a more efficient operation within the store. And we just reduces the volume of traffic on site. Um, the fact that this is an infill store just won't generate as much traffic as a typical Starbucks. And the size of the store, once again, at a thousand square feet. And more importantly, is the rise in mobile ordering. Uh, as you've heard the testimony before, uh, it, it constitutes a significant amount of uh, the ordering at Starbucks. And that's important because it reduces the time it takes to service someone at the drive-through window. Um, based on previous surveys uh, performed by KLOA and Starbucks, uh, it's our opinion the stacking for the drive-through will provide adequate stacking to accommodate the projected peak demand of the drive-through facility uh, without impacting traffic on Long Avenue. And is that true as well, um, that it won't have an adverse impact on the traffic on Addison Avenue as well? Uh, correct. 
Thank you, Mr. Worthman. Um, and just one follow up question from me getting back to pedestrians. Um, the orientation of the subject improvements with the patio and the main pedestrian way, as well as the pedestrian pickup window located situated just off of the sidewalk on Addison Avenue. Based on your many years of experience in evaluating these types of uses, um, is it your professional opinion that the improvements as designed are also intended to promote pedestrian safety? Uh, yes. Um, the, side, the, the site has been designed to you know, maximize pedestrian safety. We indicated with the right turnout only, uh, with the stop sign at Addison Street, with the location of the window, the patio, everything you said. Yes, correct. And, and two, with the um, pedestrian walkway, internal pedestrian walkway accessible directly off of the sidewalk on Addison Street, um, a pedestrian will not have to traverse any of the internal driveways or drive aisles or the drive through in order to occupy either the outdoor patio or the pickup window. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you so much. Um, is there any questions for Mr. Worthman or Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry, excuse me. That's your your job. That's totally fine. Um, any questions for Mr. Worthman from the board? Mr. Chairman, if it is okay if there's not. Um, actually, never mind. I'm good. Yeah, so um, any questions from the board for anyone we've just heard from? before we turn over to the objectors. Okay, um, so let's move over now to the objectors. I want to, um, again, give that opportunity for, for one person to lead things off in stating the objection. And also, like I said, you have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. Um, so if you're that person, um, feel free to just unmute yourself and I'll get you sworn in. I just lost you again, so I'll have to, I'll just reboot. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Our yeah, box, just, do you deliver? Everyone just take a breather. <laughs> Alder and Reboyeris, are you teaching yoga over there? He said, he said, take a breather. I know. You're doing a good job. We could all learn from you. Could all... you, could, you could lead us through some meditation or something. Yeah. It's only a little after nine hours and five meetings in between, but I'm good. Yeah. That's, that's nothing for this board. That's true.
Chairman, uh, Donna is back, but uh, I asked her to also dial in from her phone as a backup. Great. We'll um, just can, give her one more just, minute to dial in. Yeah, just to confirm, can she um, uh, can she hear us? Donna, yes, are you? Yes, I can. Yes, okay. I can. Okay. okay. So, um, all right, I'm going to... Dial in. Dialing I'm looking again. for the number. It's it's in the email I just I sent you earlier. Gotcha. Okay, and Donna, just let us know when you're ready for us to get started. Well, let's just go ahead. I dialed the uh, phone number and it says it's not the right meeting ID. So let's cross our fingers. I, I was, uh, we were at the point of the objectors. Yep. Yep. We were just starting right. it. Um, okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Um, you said, so if you're that person, so that's yep. where we are. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So there's a hand raised and it's the person called owner dash three, six, seven. So if you could please state your name and address. Frank Rizzo, 5400 West Addison Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60641. Great. Thank you, Mr. Rizzo. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay, great. Um, tell us what brings you here today. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time out to explain uh, thoroughly and consider the Portage Park area for this development. I really appreciate Starbucks for even considering it because it is an eyesore to have an empty storefront. Um, taking that in consideration, um, the only thing that I would have an issue with is it's vehicle oriented instead of pedestrian oriented. I have no issues with the Starbucks being there. It's a great um, asset to the community. Um, the only problem is think about um, what Mr. O'Brien stated, he stated that there's a lot of commercial businesses, and I do agree with him. One caveat he forgot to mention was a lot of those businesses are pedestrian friendly. So um, you have to consider you're eliminating a lot of your clientele by just vehicles, right? So there's a church that's about a block away that you could be capitalizing on because after church lets out, they could walk over to Starbucks and relax and have coffee instead of have to drive over and leave and get out of the neighborhood. Another um, valuable asset is the park, which is only a couple blocks south, which is a huge asset. And Starbucks is missing out on that caveat because think about who goes to the park, right? Families and 
people who like to work out, people like to relax and enjoy themselves. They don't drive to the park. They walk to the park. So that's one thing that you're missing out. Okay, another thing is, um, I remember in the first proposal, there was 11 parking spaces. I don't know in this proposal if those 11 parking spaces are still there or if they've been eliminated. Maybe someone can explain that. But one suggestion I highly recommend Starbucks consider is reversing the mindset of having outdoor dining experience and have that for indoor because you're not going to utilize it to the maximum profitability of utilizing the space effectively. If it rains, if you have snow, if it's cold, if you're allocating uh, spots for people to sit and dine, why not maximize it by having it indoor? So that's something that I would highly recommend that you change the mindset of having outdoor because it's going to be a wasted space. No one's going to use it effectively. They're not going to have all um, year round enjoyment of that space. So if you want to invest your money wisely, my recommendation is to take those outdoor spots and redesign it one more time and have it for indoor use. Okay. And so um, another, um, what was the other uh Another caveat I had. Uh, so if someone could just please address the 11 car, uh, spots, that would I, I would really appreciate that if those are still in the new design or if they've been eliminated. So you can answer that. Yep, great, Mr. Rizzo. Um, that's, uh, that's a fair question. So if you're directing that to the applicant, um, it can go right to the applicant. So Mr. Hanrahan, can um, you explain that? Yeah, hold on. I don't know if Mr. Hanrahan was actually part of that. It was um part of the, we had 11 parking spaces, but only one ADA handicap accessible um space at the, in the first iteration, Mr. Chairman. Um, during a site plan review with the city, we um, determined that, that we should have two ADA compliant parking spaces and as a result, um, since they are a little bit larger, we lost one parking space. Um, we also in, um, increased the size of the outdoor patio. Mr. Hanneran can maybe speak to that a little more because um, that's not, again, that's um, an amenity that is unique to this location and it was one that was desired um, during our community engagement, including the community meeting that we had. So we did also increase the size of that as well as expand the sidewalk around the um, pickup window to, again, kind of just further enhance the pedestrian experience because um, it isn't just intended for vehicles. Um, we, they, tr Starbucks did truly intend to have um, service the residents of the neighborhood, including the ones who might be traveling off to that park. That was a consideration of ours, um, grabbing a coffee and taking the kids to the park. So perhaps that addresses some of it. Mr. Hanrahan can um, certainly corroborate, but that's what happened with the ADA, at least compliant. Um, and I know Mr. Hanrahan wasn't super involved in that site plan review. Okay, got it. So um, how many spots are there now for parking? Oh, sure, Mr. Rizzo, there's 10, and that includes two ADA com, um, compliant spaces, whereas the original iteration only had one. Okay, so the thing is, the other two Starbucks that are in the neighborhood, um, you know, I listened to the last meeting that transpired, and I saw all the negativity. I don't like negativity, right? I want to be positive, upbeat, be proactive, right? Give you concise constructive criticism instead of just complaining without offering anything worthwhile, right? So the one that's on Cicero is extremely busy facility, right? And a lot of people walk to that facility. Even I heard statements from Starbucks representatives in the newspaper stating that a lot of people will walk to that 
facility on Cicero at Six Corners. So take that in consideration, right? Another one that's on Lawrence and Central, that one is a very huge Starbucks and it's brand new and there's a lot of people that are inside. They have a big, huge parking lot and they use utilize the drive-through, which is great, but they also utilize the indoor seating, which is a really great asset. You're going to win. It's a win-win situation by offering more services instead of offering less services. So think about all the businesses that are in the neighborhood, right? So we have State Farm which is right in the immediate area. They don't have a drive-through. They have pedestrian oriented business, right? Then you have that little uh, shrimp uh, restaurant, which is adjacent to State Farm. They don't have a drive-through. They have pedestrian friendly business, right? The church doesn't have a drive-through, right? Those are another pedestrian friendly oriented business, okay? And then we have, um, what's another business? Across the street, I don't know if it's still open, um, there was an Allstate insurance, which is right there. Uh, they had a bakery that closed. It's unfortunate. That bakery was a staple of the neighborhood and it was a great viable business. But after I think 50 years or 40 years, they finally closed shop. So that didn't have a drive through. There's a childcare business, which is across the street where they have all these kids and we have all these parents dropping off their kids right across the street, they don't have a drive through right? So that's another thing, you know, consider all these businesses. Um, even that auto shop that you re uh, reference, which is a Fiat Ferrari um, auto dealer, right? They don't have a drive through right? None of those places. There's a bar that's right going further east which is next to those two gas stations that you mentioned, right? That is a family oriented business. There is no drive through in that business, right? So those are all viable businesses that are successful. There's a dentist office that's right in the immediate area. That's also very viable business. So all these businesses, they're counting on pedestrian people, right? They also will accommodate vehicles. Vehicle traffic is also a benefit. So by you only concentrating on cars, you're limiting the profitability, right? Because inevitably you want to make money, right? That's the end goal, right? Is to make money. As a business standpoint, you, you should really rethink it and reconsider it and put it back on the table of saying, you know what? Let's do it correctly. Just like they, they complained um, on Harlem and uh, where was that other one? Harlem and Bellman, I think it was, somewhere around there, where the community complained about you're, you're trying to make this a drive-through Starbucks and Starbucks reconsidered it and they converted it and they have indoor seating. And that was a wise decision for them to listen to the community because inevitably, Who's going to patronize it? We are, right? We're going to patronize it and give you our money. So if you don't listen and you just put forth what you anticipate or what you think we like, that's where you have problems, right? And that's where you have people that won't patronize it or may, may not patronize it to the full effect. And then you end up closing because of profitability. It's not as profitable as you think. And then you close it. And that would be a sad decision that you invested all this money and then you have to close it. And we have another ISO. So yeah. I would just really think about, reconsider and maybe tweak it again and take those outdoor spaces and have it indoor. Yep. And that would be a great consideration. Yeah, and Mr. Rizzo, I think we do have the substance of your objection um, for the board to consider I'm wondering, because I want to give the opportunity just to some of the other objectors to state there, did you have any different topic of substantive objection or am I able to move on to the others? Yeah, you can, you can move on. That's fine. Okay. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak as well. That's really nice that you- hey, Thank you. Of course. Thank you for, uh, for waiting all day too. Um, 
and giving us a respectful objection to consider. So I'm gonna move on now to either of uh, Pamela or Patricia Conroy, um, whichever would like to speak first. Yes, can you hear me? This is Patricia Conroy. Yes, okay, Patricia, can you state your name and address, please? Patricia Conroy, 5515 West Pensacola Avenue, Chicago, 60641. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great, okay, go right ahead. Um, well, I am um, uh, the president of the Portage Park Neighborhood Association, um, and our board has not necessarily taken a stance on this um, development. The issue that we have is one of transparency. We're concerned that residents um, are not really aware of the site plan because it has not been widely disseminated. Um, so we're not sure how they can actually form an opinion about something that um, uh, it's hard to get information on. Um, you know, the November ZBA meeting continued this matter, partly to hold a community meeting. Um, some days after that, I called all the member boarders' office to ask how a resident might learn the date and time of that meeting. Um, I was advised um, that it would not be posted on his website. It would not be posted on his social media pages. The only way to learn of the meeting was to sign up for his email newsletter. Um, I advised that I was signed up for that newsletter but had not received anything in a long time. Um, so they took my email again and told me that I would be signed up. I asked if there was any way to sign up for the newsletter just on his website um, and there is no way to do so. Um, so I only learned the date of the community meeting from an email from attorney Sarah Barnes. I never received any email from Alderman Borges' office. Um, I mean, attendance at the meeting was sparse, I believe, for that reason, that it wasn't really publicized by the Alderman or by students or the developer. Um, so that's a concern. I, I did attend the December 16th community meeting. Um, he expressed concern about the left turn onto Addison, and it's great to see that that was addressed. Um, you know, if only by a left, uh, a right turn only sign. Um, but Aldermember Boy was also promised at that December 16th meeting that he would post the site plan on his website. And that was also in the flyer for the community meeting that it would be posted there. Um, it's still not there. Um, two days ago, Sarah Barnes did send us the updated site plan with the right turn only onto Addison. I thank her for that. Um, the Portage Park Neighborhood Association would have been happy to help disseminate the site plan. We were repeatedly told that because of copyright, we could not do so. So our concern is really one of transparency that the community may not really be aware of, you know, exactly what's how it's going to operate. Um, so we had submitted an email asking if the matter could be continued. Um, I mean, I guess I would just, I'm, I'm a librarian by trade and if, if residents aren't given information i'm not sure how they can have any meaningful uh, participation in this process um i guess i would also say to add to what mr o'brien said uh addison and cicero is a huge intersection um long avenue is a side street it's not an arterial street it's it's very narrow so i don't agree with the comparison there um i think that's Pretty much everything I have. I want to thank the ZBA and the ZBA staffers that are working in the background because I can see this is very challenging to do at this time. Thank you. Thank you, and um, and thank you for for coming on behalf of your organization as well. Um, and and we will take this under consideration. Um, and I know there's um, another another Conroy was on. Um, I want to make sure, and I'm blanking on the first name. Pamela. Yeah, is Pamela still on? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Pamela, um, uh, I'll swear you in and get you on the record. If you, you know, you can agree with the past objection or you can give something new. It's your um, opportunity. But to start, will you state your name and address? Uh, Pamela Conroy, 5529 West Pensacola Avenue. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah, I just substantially support what Patricia said. Um, I know I sound like her, but we're not the same person. It's just closely related. Um, <laughs> obviously, we live on the same block. Um, I, I do have a few extra things. Um, I'm definitely in agreement with Department of Planning and Development. Um, I did send an email to your board because I was worried about being able to attend this meeting and be here at the exact right time when this is heard. So I think you'll see in my email, I 
pretty much echo a lot of what um, Department and Planning and Development had said, which does address the criteria. Just a few things that came up. I want to let you know that when Patricia said that, um, Sarah Barnes sent the plans to her, me, the Neighborhood Association, it's because we sought them. That was not proactively done. Um, and in fact, as I'm aware of the Avondale Neighborhood Association, which is two miles east of here, being um, engaged on this, which was very strange. Um, I'll also add that um, if you travel along Long, north and south from there, all the way to Grand on the south, where it kind of really gets interrupted, it doesn't really continue meaningfully there um, until probably south of, I don't know what, and all the way north where, you know, it hits the Kennedy, there's no drive throughs on Long. And it's because they're really minor intersections. Long is skinny, sometimes it turns a little bit. Um, I just don't think it's an appropriate use. And just to echo also what Patricia said, the way I get to the intersection of Addison Long is by traveling north on Cicero to make a left on Addison, which means I'm directly affected by the drive-through at McDonald at Addison Cicero, um, which is the one that's primarily a problem that the Kentucky Fried Chicken people, they don't do anything too crazy because it's literally on the corner. The McDonald has a ton of crazy turns both in and out of their drive-throughs on Cicero, just a very few feet south of um, Addison. So I don't view a drive-through there as really um, a positive and, you know, seeming to indicate that it would be great to have one at <clears throat> Addison and Long. So I think, again, I, I agree with Department of Planning and Design and I'm glad that they see that it's really not a great use, especially following the criteria that the ZBA follows. Um, thanks for your time. Yep, thank you, Ms. Conroy. And um, that actually sparks, I do want to make sure in this um, portion that we get Nancy Radzovich with the Department of Planning and Development on um, to explain a little bit about the denial recommendation. So Nancy, are you still on? I am. Great. Okay, go right ahead. And Nancy's sworn in. Yeah. Um, so, you know, our, our recommendation really was based on looking at, again, with every special use, we evaluate the, the request in the context of that immediate surrounding area. And if you look down Addison and, and one of the residents, you know, basically read off my notes, it seems like, you know, talked about how a lot of the, the commercial that's on that, that stretch, right, you know, in the block or two on either side of this intersection is really pedestrian oriented businesses. There's small service businesses. There's the state farm, you know, there's office type businesses. It's really a pedestrian neighborhood. And then as you go down the predominantly pedestrian neighborhood, as you head further east on this block on Addison, the, the block is filled with a lot of single family right on Addison, single family residences. So um, going down long, same thing. It's it's um, single family and and you know smaller, lower intensity multifamily residences. But it's it's a predominantly single family res residential neighborhood in that immediate area with with some service and, and retail businesses. Um, I do want to um, acknowledge um, a couple things that. Um, Sarah Barnes and her team had referenced. Um, they did. They did point out that there is an auto repair shop. I think a couple blocks further east um, that does some. I think she said it does um, auto body work as well as painting. And I did confirm the underlying zoning for that property is is B three one. I suspect that's probably a uh, use that predates our current zoning ordinance because. Currently in that zoning district, a auto body or an auto repair with that type of painting and, and um, auto body use would not be permitted. So, um, so that's kind of an anomaly. If that business were to go away, something similar would not be able to, of that intensity would be able to go in there. Um, the other thing that we looked at, and, and I think um, the concern again is that this is, this is a heavily residential neighborhood and the site is, is, is exclusively designed to accommodate traffic. It's to accommodate, and I, I believe the expert said, um, 45 seconds from 
the order window to to get to the pickup window. Um, I, I, you know, that really explains a lot of how this site is designed, and it's it's really geared towards just traffic, and not geared towards the pedestrians, which we DPD likes to see when we see restaurants. We want to see a restaurant that has indoor seating. Um, the the outdoor seating area, um, you know, at, as as the uh, attorney had said, you know, I think they said they're going to propose to put some sort of um, heaters there. Even that is probably not going to be well used. It's it's really the site is designed for for fast turnaround for auto oriented customers. Even just having the pickup window, you know, people can't even go inside. So it's it's just a heavily um, auto oriented use. Um, within an area that's that's really predominantly um, residential with smaller intensity, lower intensity commercial. So um, for those reasons, let me see if there's anything else in my notes. Um, for those reasons, yeah, we, you know, oh, I do want to acknowledge, um, I think it was Mr. and Brian who stated that um, restaurants are allowed by right. And, and we acknowledge a, a restaurant, if Starbucks just wanted to put just a restaurant here, um, you know that that would seem to be an appropriate site. Um, it is it is actually the the drive through and and how this is oriented that is the concern. Okay, thank you, um, thank you very much, Nancy. So I, uh, Alderman Raboyas, I want to um, get you on at this point, um, and then but right before we go back to close things out, um, how does that sound to you? It's fine. Perfect. Okay, so you were previously sworn in because you've been with us all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Knudsen and Commissioners of the Zoning Board of Appeals. As uh, Councillor Barnes stated earlier, the subject property and improvements has been vacant here in this site for over five years. This property was not well maintained by prior owners, so it has remained a blighted condition for the community. The subject property was most recently occupied and operated by an auto repair shop. And before that, a gas station and also a hot dog stand on the side, on the side street of uh, actually in interior, but it was, uh, it was on, the, on the long side. Both of the property uh, operations were much more intense in use, greater nuisance to the residents has been stated and produced far more traffic than the proposed Starbucks, which will actually be serving and it's generally desired by the community. There are many more intense commercial uses on this stretch of Addison Street. Throughout the process, the Starbucks team proactively engaged with the community, providing additional notices and information through mailings and walking around the neighborhood and even hosting a community meeting. That is their job. In consideration of this engagement with the community, Starbucks made certain modifications to their programming. They changed it to address the feedback that it received from the residents of the neighborhood most immediately impacted. One of the modifications which I as well approved was specifically re requested was he restrict vehicular movement out of onto Addison on going turning left. As part of the propos proposal, they will do a right turn only. They will also be closing and or reducing the the two existing large curb cuts on Addison Street, thereby restoring the pedestrian way and allowing for unfettered vehicular movements down Addison Street, which is also another community benefit. By and through construction of the new building and improvements, which includes significant new landscaping and resurfacing of the parking lot, this proposal will create new jobs for my community. And two, through its operations, Starbucks will be creating permanent jobs with full benefits. Starbucks is committed to working with my office to hire from within the community. If approved, Starbucks will be investing millions of dollars in the proposed improvements, which are intended to serve this neighborhood. By reactivating this idle site, Starbucks will be generating significant tax revenues that will go back into the community. As a vacant site, the property yields nominal tax revenue, as we all know. 
as aldermen, I know this community and the residents therein deserve better than anyone to, to see a new site there. Mr. Chairman and members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, we have received numerous emails and letters from the immediate area, Portage Park residents. The most significant letter is from uh, Mr. Kuzmanik right across the street on the west side of the street, who owns the building to the west, who says the site has been a blighted site for years with random cars parking at all hours of the night, drinking and who knows what else. He thinks the Starbucks will be a boom to this community. Mr. Knudsen, as the alderman for this area for at least 20 years, I am fully committed to continue working hand in hand with the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Zoning Department, and the Administrator, Patrick Murphy. While I do understand that there is some reluctance for this location for Starbucks, I ask our commissioners, therefore, that uh, to consider my appeal for the members of my community. I therefore ask for a favorable consideration for the above mentioned site, and I thank you. Great, thank you, Alderman. We really appreciate your feedback and um, and um, for for also coming and sticking around. Um, so, with that, I want to move. Um, first, I want to give the board opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. And then I'm going to ask um, that the applicant keep their closing um, very brief because we, we do have a lot of information on this. Um, so first, um, any questions from the board? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? This is Commissioner Rao. Uh, I have one, one question for the applicant. If you could please summarize um, succinctly what the rationale is for no indoor seating and the emphasis on the drive through, that would be great. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Um, here, uh, we've noticed that there isn't a lot of walking traffic. What I would say is we um, the drive-through is very important to us here. Uh, like we stated before, we've accommodated a different requests um, from the community, the feedback that we got um, to make this more pedestrian family. So we added the pickup window. Um, not having the indoor, even adding the outdoor patio area, it does cause a little bit of a, a labor inefficiency on our end, as we need someone to monitor the outdoor patio. Um, with adding an indoor patio or in, indoor uh, seating area, that makes it even more complicated. Um, we did decide, though, to, to go with the outdoor patio proposed here um, to give something, you know, during the warmer months of the year. Um, so that was the rationale, if that makes sense. Thank you. And, oh, sorry. Sorry, Commissioner. I'm just bouncing off of that again because I don't know if it was clear in your direct. Um, these decisions aren't made with haste by... Starbucks, you um, considered the programming for this particular site for many, many months prior to ever petitioning this board. Is that right? Yeah, we've been looking at this for, for quite a while now. Yep. And with that in mind, um, as you were indicating earlier, these days, you said at least an overwhelming, much more than 80% of your transactions citywide, but especially at these types of locations are pickup only, correct? Not indoor service? Well, no, I mean, not the, not that there, we don't have indoor service, but what I I'm would sorry, say- indoor dining, it's mostly pickup. Our, so our customers, are mainly using our stores to pick up their drinks, pick up their espresso, coffee, breakfast sandwich, and leave. So that is what that that eighty percent number is, and that could be anywhere from a, you know picking up through the drive through. It could be picking it up um, through our app. It could be coming inside, and leaving. But a majority of our customers um, are that way. Um, so this store 
is um, serving the customers that way. So you're not finding as many of your stores where people will come in and sit and enjoy their coffee and sit at a table for, you know, some time, a couple hours. It's mostly, again, 80% of that is on the go pickup of some type. Yes. And that yes. went into your consideration in the programming for this, this site? Yes. Yep. Um, and two, um, as you indicated, you made significant modifications to the program to make it not just a drive-through oriented um, facility, but you did add pedestrian enhancements, including the pedestrian window, the heaters, expanding the pedestrian way, and the outdoor patio, correct? Yeah, yeah, yep. Great. Sorry, was I not? And sorry no, if I, I wasn't clear earlier. No, I, I, <laughs> I think we got it. I think we got it. Um, okay. Any other questions from the board? Um, I got. I got. I got. I want to make a statement. It sure seems like you guys uh, thought this through uh, during the pandemic. You got outdoor dining. You got drive-through. This seems pandemic-proof. Uh, so I don't know how long we're going to be in this pandemic, but. It seems like your whoever went to the drawing board, they thought thought of the pandemic, especially with the outdoor dining and the drive through. I just want to make my uh, observation here. Sure. No, and I appreciate that. And that number I was giving actually was even pre pre pandemic. Yeah, I think, Mr. Hanrahan, when did you say you started rolling out your first um, <laughs> type of this drive through only carry on the go restaurant was? 2003 is that what you said i i can't speak for the nation that was our first um first store we opened up in chicago land i believe was in the early 2000s correct chicago, for a drive through yeah. only there were the point yeah. i was making is that i think people are gonna be you know for the next few years they're gonna be very pandemic uh thoughtful this and this this site with the drive through and the outdoor dining i just think people are gonna think hmm, seems pretty safe here outdoor drinking and driving through. So that's all I'm saying. You know, I just say we're moving, we're in America 2.0 and this seems to be addressing America 2.0. That's all. Sure. So better than anyone, Commissioner. And towards that end, um, you know, the thought of coming out of the COVID, hopefully one day Starbucks would be able to convert this to provide indoor service at some point in time, because that's allowed as of right. Um, the only different the only thing the reason we come before this board here today is for the drive-through but um otherwise if consumer trends gravitate towards the other way where people do want to go inside and um staffing efficiency allows then this can easily be converted to provide for indoor service without having to come back before the board Okay, great. Um, so any other, and sorry, because it, I think my connection got unstable for a second. So let me know if there's any issues. Any other questions from the board? Um, or else can I, just, honestly, can I mention one last thing? Um, so sorry, no, I, we're, we're through the objection. We, uh, I think we've gotten a little derailed in conversation. And um, I'm just trying to confirm with The board because it's the board's turn to ask questions here yeah. so any other questions from the board okay um counselor of course as process you've got opportunity to close i just please ask you to keep it brief is there any type of rebuttal that you wanted i think like you said there is a lot of information i hope that we even address some of the objectors concerns on our direct um was there anything in particular during the objectors testimony that you wanted me to address on rebuttal or do you want me to just close you know it sounds like the board was okay on questions okay so. okay perfect um i just want to once more thank um all of the commissioners alderman reboirez um Mr. Rizzo, both of the Ms. Conroys um, for staying with us here today, for continuing to engage with Starbucks and with me um, as we've worked through this process. It has been a long one, but um, I know on behalf of Starbucks that they are really excited and committed to becoming a very vested member of this community 
um, as we saw from the onset, they truly did um, get out there and hit the streets literally um, in trying to get feedback. Um, I think there's nothing that shows that or demonstrates that more than the 11 letters of support um, and petitions of support that we have from people that live directly near the um, subject site. We're talking about the immediately adjacent neighbor, the, um, again, the family across the street, the families behind us who all provided letters of support based on this design that you have before you here today um, and who are excited to see um, a Starbucks come into the community. So um, with that, I would like to say once more, based on all of the information and exhibits that we have provided, the facts in the record, our expert opinions, the um, modifications that were made to this particular plan with the direct intent to promote and further pedestrian safety and pedestrian patronage. I think um, Starbucks has demonstrated that we do in fact meet all of the strict standards and criteria for a special use as is set forth in the current zoning ordinance. Um, and that we will, <laughs> that Starbucks will be um, a compatible operation and will not adversely impact the public or have an adverse impact on the adjacent properties. And um, their operations are very consistent and compatible with the other uses in the neighborhood and will serve the pedestrian uses in the neighborhood. So with that, I respectfully close and request a favorable um, opinion or favorable determination on this petition for a special use on behalf of Starbucks. Great, thank you so much. We'll take this under consideration. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you to the, to the objectors and, and applicant for, um, for the, the time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Chairman, and um, all of the commissioners. Yep. Okay. We're going to good night. To, you too. We're going to move on to calendar number four seventy six dash twenty one dash s. Um. So I'm going to go ahead and read the department's recommendation because we have Councilor Tom Moore on the matter. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish a transitional residence for eight male clients in an existing two-story building, provided that number one, the special use is issued solely to the applicant, Prentice Place. Number two, the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and drawings dated January 18, 2022, prepared by Beehive. Number three, the facility is utilized as transitional housing and treatment exclusively for adult males recovering from drug and alcohol addiction. Number four, there are no more than eight adult male residents at any time. And number five, the final linkage agreement with the Department of Corrections is provided prior to the issuance of any building permits. Um, with that, if there's anyone on to object to this calendar number 476, 21-S, just raise your hand and we'll uh, make sure you get a chance to talk. So Councillor um, Tom Moore, if you're on, go right ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Hopefully we have Mr. Prentice Earl, uh, and if if he's here and you would please swear him in. Yeah, let's see, do we have um, Prentice Earl, if you're on, can you state your name and address, please? And I see you, you're just muted. Yeah, my name is Prentice Earl. My address is 1115 South Plymouth Court, Unit 501, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you, Mr. Earl. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. So, uh, Prentice, um, tell the board a little bit about yourself. You um, were, as a younger person, uh, you had some addictions, did you? I did. I, I uh, was addicted to alcohol and heroin um, from a very young age from the age of 15 up until the age of 42 when okay. I uh, came into recovery. Okay, and you went to a facility like you now run, you run two of them and you're uh, trying to open this third one, is that right? Yes, I am. I went from being a resident to being a house manager to being program director 
and that gave me the the inspiration to start my own business. Okay, and so um, you uh, came before this board in 2013. Well, first of all, you became educated and you got certificates uh, and various qualifications as a uh, counselor and an addiction an addiction counselor. Is that right? I did. I went back to school and and earned my um, my certificate in addictions. Uh, so to, I'm a certified alcohol and drug counselor. I'm also an NCRS, which stands for Nationally Certified Recovery Specialist. And I've been working in the field since 2001. Okay. And incidentally, how long have you been sober? I've been sober since September 6th of 1998. 23 years, four months, and 15 days, one day at a time. Okay. And um, so your your mission in life now is to try to do for others what was done for you. Absolutely. Okay. That's what, that's what drives me. Okay. And um, you were in front of this board on 2013 uh, for your first... Um, uh, recovery center that you still run. Is that right? Yes, sir. And then in, again, in 2017, you had your second one. Is that right? Yes, sir. And then uh, you became aware of this uh, empty church and uh, you were able to buy it. And it, it is a rock solid old building with um, uh, spaces that will uh convert with uh, for reuse without having to structurally redo the building. Is that right? Yes, it, it, it fit our needs perfectly. And, and, and that's why I bought it. Okay. And uh, we have um, worked with the uh, uh, planning department and, and uh, you hired an architect and we uh, drew out the, uh, the building and, and, um, uh, showed all the measurements and, and where all of the, all of the activities would be. Uh, is that right? Yes. And also uh, we've shared with them your linkage agreements. Uh, you have very, you bring in various counselors and uh, other agencies to uh, help uh, with the people uh, that are your residents. Is that right? I do. It's and a collaborative you have, very, effort. you have very strict rules um, that, and if you have uh, no tolerance uh, for drugs and um, alcohol, and if someone violates the rules, uh, they are, uh, you have no tolerance, so they are dismissed. Is that right? They are, they are discharged. Uh, yes, we, 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 we drop we do uh, urine screens every single week. And so that tends to, to limit uh, guys uh, drinking or drugging on the premises. Okay. And um, you have on your other two facilities, you have a contract uh, with the Department of Corrections where you take people um, coming out of prison who are on their way back into society and they tend to send to you people who had uh, drug or alcohol problems before they went into prison. Of course, they're dry during prison, but the idea is to try to um, educate and counsel them so that they don't go back to the drugs or alcohol. Is that right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> in, in, our, um, in our collaborations with, with the penal system and also with other uh, treatment facilities, in Chicago, they sent, they target our agency uh, with people who have backgrounds of substance abuse. Okay. And, um, you know, I know this is hard to pin down and, and it's only true at any one point in time, but what's your approximate um, success rate? Well, we, we, we're somewhere between, I would say 70 and 75% success rate. And, and we document this stuff. Uh, when we do our discharge summaries on the clients when they leave, you know, we, we ask their permission to get their forwarding address.
texts and their phone numbers, and we track them. We keep up with them because we want them to come back at some point, as many of them do, and share with the guys uh, who are currently in the house what their experience was and what helped lead to their success. Okay. Um, and uh, you and I have worked out an affidavit where you addressed each of the criteria necessary for this board to grant a special use to allow you to have an eight person uh, recovery home at this address in this old church. And if you were to continue to testify, you testify consistently with it. Is that right? Yes. Um, Joe Ryan, are you uh, here today? Yes, I am today. Okay, good. And uh, you've been previously sworn, is that right? I have. Joe's been sworn and we've acknowledged his expertise. And I'll, I'll just say we'll circle back to questions uh, for Mr. Earl after you, um, uh, after Joe gets on. Okay. And, and Joe, over the years, uh, you have many expertise, but one of yours has been one of the things that uh, you've uh, testified um, repeatedly on is, is recovery and, and transitional homes. Is that right? That's correct. And um, I, at my request, you looked into this uh, uh, proposal. And as a matter of fact, you um, have dealt with Mr. Earl on two previous occasions. And uh, what did you find in terms of uh, his eligibility for a special use at this location? Um, I did testify for Mr. Earl on uh, two other homes in the Roseland neighborhood. Um, I found, uh, I went to this facility and uh, listed all the criteria in my report for the board to grant the special use. It, it, it's uh, a wonderful reuse of a facility and it kind of keeps um, in, uh, you know, bringing spirit, spirituality and uh, Mr. Earl's uh, continued success in, in rehabilitating and helping to rehabilitate people in the neighborhood. It, it, it's a, a, a good building for this. They have plenty of room. They're able to service uh, uh, people returning to the community and help them <clears throat> to find the right way uh, or to find the uh, uh, a healthy way to live as uh, opposed to re returning to the bad elements on the street. And uh, in your report, you uh, addressed each of the criteria necessary for this board to grant a special use. I did. And in your opinion, uh, it, this proposal can meet all of those criteria and uh, this will not have a negative effect on the surrounding property values. Is that that right? No, there will be no Im no negative impact, and uh, will will be a very good reuse of the uh, existing use. Uh, that's our case in chief. Both of these gentlemen are uh, available for questions. Thank you. And yeah, I've got a, a question for Mr. Earl, and I apologize if it's um, something that's already been covered. But first off, Mr. Earl, thank you so much for sharing your personal success with sobriety and what drives your work. Um, one question. Thank you. I, yeah, no, thank you. One question I had for you is um, you have a very high success rate. Um, and I'm wondering how long do uh, the men men typically stay within your facility. Is there a limit on time, or how do you gauge that? We allow people to to stay for up to a year, as as long as they're doing uh, positive stuff like working or going to school, and attending uh, AA and NA meetings, and helping out around the house, stuff like that. As long as they're doing positive stuff, we allow them to stay for quite some time. But generally, guys average anywhere from four to six months with us. Okay, and I'm assuming um, after a year or six months, there's help during the transition out into you know finding, finding new residents as a part of the therapy that goes on in all of this? Absolutely. For the most part though, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't charge people rent. We're funded through the state, so that once guys start working, that they, they save their money. And and for the most part, guys, uh, guys move out 
into their own uh, homes when they leave or either reconnect with their families or significant others. Uh, finding alternative housing is really not that big of an issue after they've been there so long because they save money and we help them to manage their money, you know, uh, how to work bank accounts and stuff. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions from members of the board for Mr. Earl or Mr. Ryan? No, I just want to uh, make a comment. This is Sam Toy. I, I voted both in 13 and 17 for his other projects, and I'm very happy I did, and I look like I will probably be voting in favor of this one as well. So thank you. And thank you, Mr. Earl, for giving back to uh, the, the citizens of Chicago, helping them, because that's what we need, especially in this time. So thank you very much for doing God's work. And thank you for your support. And thank you, Mr. Chairperson, for that for that story you told this morning on how uh, MLK Day came to be in the state of Illinois. That was really inspiring. I appreciated that. Thanks. And happy anniversary to your grandparents. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, you know, on that note, you saying that I also need to apologize for the fact that you've been here since the morning. Um, that is definitely worth recognizing. It's been a very long day. So it's okay. So I thank you for that. And any, I just want to open one final opportunity to any other questions um, from the board. Do any other board members have questions? Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'd just like to say real quickly, thank you for the accommodation last month. I went to the uh, drugstore to get my wife some medicine and just kind of spaced out on that last uh, uh, hearing I had with uh, uh, Tom Moore again. Joe, yeah, no, no need to apologize. If you, you know, we we track people down. Very, <laughs> yeah. very committed to getting people down. I'm not trying to pass this one, so um, don't Thank worry you. at all. And thanks for uh, bringing it up. Um, okay, so. We're gonna take this under consideration. Again, thank you everyone um, who's still on the call uh, for your time. Oh, I'm being reminded, sorry. Uh, Alderwoman Austin is um, still on the call. Alderwoman, are you there? Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm sorry, by this time I forget things that my mind <laughs> knows where. Um, so Alderwoman, you've been sworn in, so you may go ahead and speak on this matter. <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, I like Sam uh, Toya, uh, Commissioner Toya, I'm sorry. Uh, will be supporting, I'm asking for support for this project. The only problem that I do have because uh, Mr. Earl get them from the penal institution, do you have any sex offenders in your facility? I do not. We, we absolutely have zero tolerance for uh, sex offenders because we don't want to endanger our community in that exactly. way. So well, we that was the only question that some of the uh, residents was asking me. No. And uh, I didn't, I've never known you to have them at any of your other facilities. So I didn't no, man. see any at this one, but he has done an outstanding job uh, for those that have been, you know, downtrodden. And uh, with your support for this uh, facility, I, I think the gentlemen, the men will be the better for it because, you know, with a disease such as drugs and alcohol, and you know, that circulates through many families, but he has been able to help so many of the people and many of them that I know. So with your indulgence, we pray that you uh, will approve this project. Thank you. Now I can have- Thank you, you Ms. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, Alderman Austin, you were on our first matter, you spoke and our last matter. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you for your commitment to coming in front of us and, uh, and giving your input. Um, with thank that, we'll, we'll take this matter under consideration. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Okay, um, I move that we convene into closed session pers pursuant to section 2C4 of the Open Meetings Act for the purpose of considering the evidence and testimony presented in open session. For those viewing by live stream, we will return from our closed session and the live stream will continue at that point. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. Um, we will return. Thank you.
Hi. Oh, wait. Hi, Donna. Yes, we can hear you, but you can just, I, I'll put you on mute so you don't need the phone. Okay. Okay, I believe we have everyone from the board. So I move that we return to open session. Um, Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I mean, yes, we have returned and we will now vote. Note that any motion to approve a special use will be tied to the recommendations of the department and any additional conditions read by me. I move to approve all continuance requests to the date stated by me. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, they are approved. We had no withdrawals or no dismissal. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 400-21-S and 401-21-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? No. Commissioner Rao? No. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I mean, yes, the matter's approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 1-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I mean, yes, the matter's approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 2-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 3-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 4-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve applications that were taken together for calendar numbers 5-22-S and 6-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner, es Commissioner Rao, sorry. Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 7-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Uh, yes. I vote yes, the matter's approved. I move to approve application for calendar numbers 8-22-S and 9-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 12-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Commissioner Toya? Commissioner Toya, we're having trouble hearing you. Sorry. Hello? Sam, is that you? 
Yeah, I think that I freeze. Can you hear yeah, me? We, we didn't get your vote. So um, let me restart that one because we can hear you now. Um, okay, so sorry I, about that. No, no worries. I move to approve again, application for calendar number 12-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes, the matter's approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 14-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes, the matter's approved. I move to approve. Yeah, yeah, applications yeah. for calendar number 15-22-Z and 16-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? No. Commissioner Toya? Yes. Calendar number 17-22-Z, Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner uh, Saul? Chairman, uh, your last sentence got missed. You may want to redo that. And uh, maybe you should turn your video off because uh, your internet is going red. Got it. Thank you. Um, let me just confirm with the lawyers that it's okay that I turn my video off for this. Or, or if not, then you can click on the little arrow next to your camera, go into video settings and uncheck the box that says HD. Okay, it's unchecked. It, it is unchecked already. Already. Because um, you're, you're freezing, you're frozen two, three times, but this last time we missed your sentence also. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, That's why I did what I did, yeah. Yep, okay, so I'm gonna turn my camera off um, and I'll speak very clear, but definitely just, please just, just yell out if um, I, my reception's bad. Um, and thank you. So I'm going to start again with calendar number 17-22-Z, um, just to make sure we have everything. So um, I move to approve application for calendar number 17-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 18-22-Z and 19-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 20-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 21-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 24-22-Z and 25-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 26-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Um, I lost you. I don't know if it was just me or not. All right, sorry. No, I lost you too. Sorry about that, everyone. Let me restart and, and thanks for uh, letting me know. Okay, so I moved to approve application for calendar number 27-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, the matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 28-22-S, 29-22-Z, and 30-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. 
Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Torres. Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 31-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 33-22-C. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes. The matter is approved. I move to approve applications for calendar numbers 34-22-S and 35-22-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes. The matters are approved. I move to approve application for calendar number 37-22-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul. I'm sorry, which one? Um, I believe it's, uh, oh, sorry, this one is continued. So 37 is continued. Um, thank you. And again, I'm sorry. So I moved to approve application for calendar number 367-21-S. Commissioner Toya, and let me restart. Sorry, everyone. I moved to approve application for calendar number 367-21-S with um, the conditions that the special use is issued solely to the applicant and that it's pursuant to the plans as revised on December 21st, 2021. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes, this matter is approved with the conditions as stated. I move to approve application for calendar number 476-21-S. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. Vote yes. The matter is approved. Okay. Um, I move to I move to destroy the verbatim record for our all, all closed meetings of the board through. July 17th, 2021. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Rao. Yes. Let me rephrase, sorry. Um, I move to destroy the verbatim record for all closed meetings of the board through July 17th, 2020. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. I vote yes. Um, that is that is approved. I move to approve the written resolution containing findings of fact consistent with the votes of the board for board calendar number 398-21-Z, 404-21-Z, 445-21-S, 449-21-Z, 450-21-Z, 403-21-Z, 467-21-S, 468-21-S, 469-21-Z, 482-21-Z, 483-21-Z, and 395-21-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Thal? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes, they're approved. I move to approve the written resolution containing findings of fact consistent with the votes of the board for the board's December 17, 2021 board meeting with the exception of board calendar numbers 517-21-S, 518-21-Z, and 432-21-Z. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you everyone uh, for dealing with um, poor Wi-Fi in a, a, com a commercial building in the loop. So um, with that, again, I thank everyone for all the work that goes into this, um, all the time for everyone that came in front of us that worked on it all month. Um, we really appreciate you all. So I move that we adjourn this meeting. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? 
Yes. I vote yes. We are adjourned. Again, thank you so much, everyone. Thank